Hello everyone, welcome to first of Draw with Riot. Draw with Riot is a live streamed art masterclass and it's also a chance for us to connect with players all over the world. We will have an interactive activation afterwards and I will share the details during this stream. Uh, today we are going to learn more about the process behind character creation and we are also going to share our versions of it and these versions will be created today, all today. I am Krang and today we have a very special artist with me, Chris Campbell. Welcome, Chris. How are you? Hey, Batu. How you doing, man? I'm really good. Thank you. It's it's a beautiful evening in Istanbul. And how is it over there? Uh, it's a pretty beautiful morning uh, in Orange County, California. Um, and hello to everybody who's already jumped in, man. It's awesome to see all you uh, all you guys in here. Hopefully I can, can give you guys some some interesting, fun stuff to look at. <laughs> uh, what's going to happen today? Can you just describe what what are we drawing today? <clears throat> um, so basically, like when we came up with this idea uh, a couple of weeks ago, Olia, um, one of the the main organizers of this, um, she said uh, she was into the if you guys know the Stormclaw Ursine Shaman dude um, from set two, and she kind of suggested if we maybe could turn that into a Poro. So. Um, especially with uh, with the Volibear rework uh, coming out and, and that dude looking awesome. Um, I thought, uh, you know, that sounds like a pretty rad idea. And so uh, thanks to her, I think we're going to try to do a kind of Ursine Terror Volibear Poro mashup thing. That's that's super exciting for us. And like I think it's really important to mention that Chris is not creating this art to be in the game. This is an right. art stream uh inspired by the runeterra universe so let's set the expectations right there so uh i also want to mention that i'm going to uh help chris to answer your questions so if you have questions please 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 ask us through uh twitch chat yeah for sure start. i definitely uh, yeah I, I definitely hope to give you guys you know i guess i hope it's entertaining but uh, I know that there's a lot of folks that are interested in just sort of like how to become a concept artist and how do we do that. So um, I definitely want to give you guys, you know, as much good info as I can. So how do we begin? How do we begin drawing at the first place? Yeah, well, um, you know, on, on lore, I guess I'll, I'll do a quick side here um, before I get into drawing, but I don't, I don't want to waste too much time. Um, you know, in lore, basically, we're, we're tied in together. Art is with, with design, of course, and they, they kind of... Uh, they lead the way, and we also have our narrative elements, or writers, that help us. You know, they help with VO, they help to to come up with ideas and, and edit um, both the ideas and the and the the VO for the characters, things like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, on lore itself, our designers work ahead, and they kind of establish, um, you know, what uh, maybe what what faction or what region we're going to explore, and you know, what champions are going to be a part of that. Um, and basically how they want the design to feel. Um, and once they get those kinds of things put together, they start coming to to art and, and narrative. Um, and it's on us to start basically pitching into the the like visual side of it. Uh, the concept artists start coming up with stuff as to like, you know, for Demacia, for example, right? Like when, when set one came mm -hmm. out and, and, you know, you look at Garen and you have a lot of these armored knights and things like that of Demacia, that was, you know, part of the, that's the visual execution on this feel of this like valiant knight army kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so that's the kind of thing where basically in, in the sense of like what we do on lore, we would start with design and they would come to us and then we start going back and forth with design and narrative pitching ideas until we start to get what we call like a subgroup of characters together that would, would go with the champion again, like a bunch of knights in Demacia that would go with, with, uh, Garen, um, mm -hmm. or like, you know, the, the, the pirates, the, the, um, the jagged hooks that go with, uh, gangplank and set two, that kind of thing. So um, anyway, so as a microcosm of that, to get drawing for you guys, um, with Olia's request uh, that I then also tossed over to the other concept guys on the team, they loved it. Um, I decided to go ahead and, and pull together um, a, uh, a mood board for you guys. Just a second. Oops. Oh, hold on just a sec, guys, as I talk about it. So anyway, I, I pulled together a mood board. Yeah. Well, um, while you're searching, I, I need to make sure yeah. that everyone is aware of the contest which is going on right now. After this stream, uh, you're also invited to share your versions of this art uh, via Twitter. So whilst sharing your art pieces, it's important to mention Player in Terra and use the hashtag DrawWithRiot and winners will get some cool prizes, some in-game cool prizes. So the 
first place will also get the unique opportunity to speak with you, Chris, one on one. Yeah, for sure. That uh, yeah, I am. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I think it's always fun to um, to 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 help out and and give people that, that want to break into, I guess, like the, the the games industry on the art side. Like, I was there not long ago, you know. And so the mm -hmm. uh, to get a chance to help somebody out, you know, it's always it's always fun, you know, to to, to give something back to young artists because you know I get it, man. You know, it seems like it can be so far away, but um, you know, it's 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 not. We can you know we can get you there. <laughs> so anyway, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Sorry. So, okay, back to the thing. So if you guys can see this, uh, put together just like a rough mood board. Um, and, and, and this is the kind of thing that, um, based off of Olia's idea uh, and, and the kind of different elements of it, you know, we've got like your your Poros over here and, uh, and and my man, my man Volley Bear here and the, the Stormclaw guy here. Like I was just kind of looking at stuff that I could pull from visually and thematically to... Um, to bring into this character that we're going to work on uh, kind of together, I guess, here. Um, so this is kind of an example, uh, again, like a microcosm of it, where, like, you know, you, you take things that you know about the region, you take things that you know about the things you're going to draw, the champion that these guys are going to follow, and, like, what kind of personality that comes with. Um, and we want to uh, we want to sort of fuse that into, like, a sort of sandbox of, of space to play in. Um, and then once you get that, you start playing around visually within there. And I'll show you guys here in a bit, too. I have some some sketches and stuff I did last night, uh, just to kind of get warmed up on the idea. But we're gonna we're gonna jump in here. So, anyway, um, yeah, go ahead and start uh, tossing me like any questions you guys have, if uh, if you want, and I'll start kind of getting warmed up and scribbling on some Poro action. Well, Chris, um, maybe you do you want to mention about your background because you joined uh, at you joined uh, Riot Games uh, in two thousand thirteen. And you have been working for Legends of Runeterra uh, for the past two years, I believe. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. I've been on um, on lore for a little over two years now, uh, mm -hmm. and I came there from Champion Team, where I was I was on Champion Team for like four and a half years, four and a half, almost five years. So I've been at Riot for like seven years. So I think it was like four and a half years, and now it's been two and a half or so on on um, lore. Um, as you guys can see here, I'm I'm kind of just trying to get a big puffy round Poro body going for us here. Um, so yeah, I actually spent a long time on on um, on League as well, working on champs and and in the Summoners Rift update stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then you joined uh, Legends of Runeterra. Yes, yeah, I came over to Legends of Runeterra um, actually back, and what we were working on at the time was set two that just came out. Mm -hmm. um, so I did get a chance to actually, as you guys have seen, like work on um, uh, like the the Bilgewater stuff. I worked on. Um, you know some of the some of the Nautilus sea monsters and the Maokai guys like the Snapvine and um, the uh, oh what's my man my man the the Neverglade collector that kind of stuff that's that's some of the stuff that I got to jam on when I came over. That card kills me, man. <laughs> that card. I know. Yeah, so I know. much it's, pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's a fun one. Um, uh, it, it's it's a, it's a fun one visually for me. Like I enjoyed making it, but it definitely like. Cards are all about their design, you know. So sure. um, I think it's it's his design that makes him meme worthy, and I just happen to be lucky to be the dude that drew the card, you know. Now, let's see here. So one of the things uh, I'm kind of starting to try to find here is from my sketches. I had this. I, I always like to draw from attitude, um, and you know when I when I'm making concepts, uh, one of the things that I, I have an animation. I went to school actually for animation. Uh, that was my uh, background for a long time, um, and and so. Th you know, I, I, I sort of always kind of draw from a place of like, what do I want a character to feel like? Um, I'm not as awesome as at like anatomy and some of those things that that is awesome to have. And um, I do do try to study it, but there are there are definitely like better artists, even on my team that I go to for like anatomy help and things. But um, good thing we're doing a Poro. So he's basically like a ball, like a furry ball. But um, but, you know, I, I, I just I focus a lot on attitude and I feel like with Volibear and his kind of you know the seriousness and the the kind of um, badassery that comes along with like this giant bear god of the frail uh That that it would be I don't know this poor would probably be an aggressive little dude. <laughs> I want to lower his eyes even a little bit further here. So anyway, as I'm working through this, dude, um, 
some of the elements that I've been been looking at with with Volibear that I kind of wanted to try to capture. Um, I noticed that Volibear, obviously, he has the sort of electricity, like the lightning stuff. So, you know, we we'll want to kind of make sure we sneak this in here eventually. Um, but I want to keep like the the Poro shapes and horns. I like him having this kind of like downturned, kind of angry head thing. But I kind of wanted to have like a menacing little smile here. I keep want to drop those eyes, but. Um, Anyway, so as I'm going through here, I'm kind of making sure that his little like poro anatomy is correct, if it is a thing. Um, giving him some little arms and all that. Um, if you guys remember, Volibear has these like cool, these cool things uh, right here. Well, let me get rid of this dude for a second. Volley has like these dope things. Like he's got this kind of like I don't know what you'd call it, but it's like, like the the most awesome like neck beard ever or something, um, and uh, anyway, so I want to make sure that I, I think that's kind of a nice like signifier that I can bring in to our poor old boy. I want to jump in in here for uh, one yeah, yeah. question. It's it's a beautiful question. What is the most important thing in the illustration composition, ingesting lightning, or rendering skills? Oh yeah, so that's that's um, it's an awesome question, and, and it sounds like you know you're gearing it a little bit more toward our illustration side, which is uh, you know I do I focus on the character uh, development of it, but um, you know the I, I think in the illustration for me at least it's always like composition is one of the main things, right? Like if you can uh, get the right mood and feel and and get the readability and all that stuff. And then, you know, lighting is always awesome. I love moody lighting, you know, like that, that's it. They all play into it, man. Uh, rendering is always important. Rendering is kind of the nuts and bolts, you know, and, but, but that can always be very subjective too. Like, um, I, I don't subscribe to there being like one kind of rendering that's like the best kind. I think it's all about, um, you know, what do you want to say with your piece? Uh, if you're working for like a game studio, it's what's the style of that game or that studio. Um, so there's things like that where it, it's, uh, I, I think rendering is like super critical as a like basic like skill to continue to work on. I'm working on it. Like you guys will see, I, I actually have like I think almost like a it's almost like a pencil render style that I've taken into digital color. So like I am not like a render god by any means. Like Alex Flores and and those guys who actually did the Volibear Bear uh, uh, splash, I believe he's freaking amazing. Um, and and SMV and and all the illustrators that we work with on. Um, sorry, SMV is Six More Vodka. Uh, they're the uh, the studio that does a lot of the illustrations for us, and they do an amazing, amazing job. Um, but uh, so I, I think, like, you know, all those things are important. You know, man. I, I honestly, like, with an illustrator, it's like have something you want to say, uh, and maybe what you want to say is a part of a video game. Um, but like, if you have something you want to say, then develop those like skills and an, on an axis of that, like. How can I best say the thing I want to say, or like the story I want to tell? You know, like um, I don't know. If that, it's kind of a long-winded answer, but I hope it kind of gets to what um, what's being asked in general. Though, like if you're asking from a standpoint of like, hey, what's a good way to like uh, get kind of a, a job, like a, at a riot or or at any video game place? I would say like look at what they do style-wise and how they render and how they like use shapes and and those kinds of things and their style points. And you want to start working towards those elements uh and and that's that's probably a best uh yes i see i'm i'm using procreate i actually like a long time ago i sort of slipped away from from photoshop um and used procreate so i can uh you know sit around different places in the office and at home and go to coffee shops and work and stuff like that just all right anyway so as i yeah. and, and sorry yeah interrupt me whenever with more questions because i will just talk to try to like give you guys nuggets until it's like Super you, boring or something? You, so. No, never boring. It it was so good that I couldn't interrupt actually. So uh, another question is actually the, the question was the software, but you have answered it. It was Procreate, right? Yep. yep yeah. Yep. Uh, how long does it take to a designer to create a splash art? Okay, so there's a couple elements to that question. One is, um, do you mean? Are we wanting to know like just how long it takes to do like a finished illustration? Is that what you're thinking, or? Well, they said that it, it's mo twenty eight twelve. He or she says, um, "Splash art, create a splash art." So no details. Oh, okay. So well, splash art, you know, that's that's more of a um, a league thing. Um, 
we do illustrations too. So it's, you know, a, a, the reason why I bring it up is they have different kind of uh, sort of style points and mm -hmm. some different like constraints and stuff they use. Um, so on Splash, you know, a lot of it too is like they're working on those splashes, especially for the base champ, while the base champ is still being finished in its like design, like its actual visual design and some of those things. So um, they they have a little bit of a different world, but um, I don't know, man. We I'd, I'd have to, to to check in with somebody to see uh, how many like hours it takes. Man, I would guess it's like it's a couple like weeks worth of hours. Anyway, um, I don't know. Like some, I, I try to get poke some of the guys that I work with and. If any of them are in the stream or anything like that, maybe they could pop in and answer. But, um, but it takes a long time, man. Those guys iterate and like work <laughs> real hard on those things, like rendering that stuff up. So, if you're like trying to get to splash level, it don't be disheartened if it takes you like a hundred hours to get anywhere near it, because like those guys are like the, the best artists I know, and it takes them a lot of iteration and a lot of time to get to that level. Yeah, for the players, like I, I will have, I will. Uh, my eyes are on the chat, and I, I'm taking notes. Don't worry. Uh, please don't stop asking questions. But we also need to have this drawing ready for today. Uh, how, yeah, how much yeah, do you yeah. plan to? <laughs> how much do you plan to like draw to the finish? Um, I'm gonna what's, try what's to get us. Line? Uh, I'm gonna try to get us a rendered little color uh, angry Poro Ursine, bro. Um, and one thing I got to do here, guys, is like if anybody actually likes. Uh, the earth sign dude as well is like we got to get two mouths in here man we got to get the, the double mouth thing going so that's that's my main goal is to uh make sure that we have two mouths that's it that's all i want to do with this design yeah it's important to have uh, two mouths if you're from uh that region or that terror <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. yeah hopefully hopefully all right let me see here let's see if i can i don't like how some of my design elements are overlapping you guys um, so yeah, anyway, so this is part of it, right? As I'm designing and I'm trying to figure out where I want to put some stuff. Like you guys see me kind of searching. What, I, what I'm what i hoping to do is uh, like Poros have these like little mustaches. Like they kind of always have these funny little mustaches. No nose really. Um, and I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get Volley Bear's little like um, those like glowing rune elements somewhere on here, man. Like that's, that's kind of my, my goal that I'm, searching for like at the moment but so this is kind of it though right like when, I, when i'm sitting here drawing like these are the kinds of things that i'm that i'm focused on right now i'm i'm pretty happy with um with like the base of what this poro looks like now i'm sort of like trying to just hit on like how do i fit in details in a way that like this guy will still read and not get too busy or not you know you don't want to have like hey this is an awesome like top level detail and then have it end up like overlapping another like top end detail those kinds of things um you want to keep your design as clear as possible and the good thing is it's a poro so he's not there's not a lot to him the bad thing is he's a poro so there's not a lot of places to put stuff actually and i'll show you guys now um this is how a part of the process too so last night i sat down and i spent like 15 or 20 minutes just sort of sketching out um really rough ideas different poses things like that I actually this is the guy ah layers this is the guy that i kind of like the most um so right now i'm trying to figure out how i want to get all the details in but like this is part of the concept process too especially like like for any concept artist we always kind of sketch ideas but like if i had gotten this assignment uh like i kind of did i guess from olia um but taking this assignment and and then you you go in and and i, I just do a bunch of really rough sketches nothing committal like this kind of stuff like i said this is 15 or 20 minutes on my couch just trying to find a pose and throw some elements together until i found something i like so I'm checking it right now because I wanted to kind of go back and be like, how did I work it out uh, in the scribble scrabble kind of phase? Um, uh, so I can bring it back to my to my current design. It looks like I actually didn't work it out, so that's fun. Um, so I'm gonna go back up to my main dude here for y'all and figure out if I can get layers to open. If I can get, man, I draw my sketchbook sometimes too. I wonder if any of you guys do this stuff, like where I totally like try to undo my sketchbook. You know, you start tapping on your sketchbook page, and it's too much time digital. But maybe we can do something like this, man. Like shorten them. Anyway, yeah, trying to fit this dude's this dude's vibe together. I want to fatten up. One of the guys uh, on my team actually is the the father sort of of poros i think he drew the first poros um one of our concept artists his name is oliver oliver chipping hopefully we'll get him to do one of these one day because he's he's uh 
he's an awesome dude. Um, and I told him, I was like, man, I'm going to think I'm going to get on this stream and draw a Poro, dude. I need your guidance. <laughs> so there's a beautiful question about uh, this Poro. Uh, Spiri asked, if it has two mouths, should yes. it have two mustaches? Oh, that's deep. Oh, that's deep. Um, whew, I'm going to need to take a sip of coffee on that, man. That's, <laughs> that's, that's real. Hold on just a sec. Um, let's see. I don't know, man. Maybe I can fit it in there. It might get, it might get too crazy. That might be too crazy. You might have too, there might be too much concept in your soul. All right. Well, whatever, man. We're just going to do little nubbins so I can fit them in. Little nubbins. All right. So, um, having this down, I might actually make it a touch bigger. Um, so what I'm going to do now, you guys, is, is, like I go in and kind of just do a refine pass. So this is still kind of a pretty rough sketch. I don't want to necessarily like render into this because I don't have enough things in place, like solidly in place. Um, so uh, this is kind of a phase where I'll, I'll drop down the opacity on this and then sketch it over top and try to get a much cleaner drawing. So then when I do go in and render, I kind of know where my details are. Um, also, we're going to do the deadly flip, you guys. This is, I don't know. I mean, I know we probably have a lot of artists in here and you guys have the thing where you flip and then it looks like, you know, you were drawing it as you were falling out of bed or something. Um, Ah, not too bad. Let's see what we got, man. He might need a little might need a little warp tool. Let me see here. A little liquefy action. See, this is one of the reasons why you guys I, I use Procreate. Um it's it's a little bit simpler than Photoshop, but it has a lot of power and a lot of the same tools. Um and I'm sort of the guy that came from like my sketchbook uh primarily. Um like that's just my love, man. It's like get get give me a pencil, give me uh, a page and, and let me just sort of like jam. Um, and so Procreate kind of gives me a little bit better feeling like that because it's like, I, like dude, Photoshop is amazing and I used it for years, but it's just got so much, so much awesome, you know, and I get lost in it sometimes. So um, I still use Photoshop for like finishing things up sometimes and obviously for like layout and stuff like that. But um, anyway, that's why I'm sort of like as a further explanation as to like why Procreate has become what I use. More coffee. So there's one more question if you want to, if you have the space. Uh, oh, no, no more questions. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alex Rose asks, what's the most important thing uh, you need to have to, you need to have or you need to do to become uh, a part of the team of concept artists of Riot? Yeah, I mean, so there's, there's a lot of like elements to that question, right? Uh, honestly, you know, the first thing, and, and I know, I actually had somebody reach out to me the other day and ask me like, hey, man, how do I how do I break into the industry when it's always asking for guys with experience? You know, like a, it wants, you know, e even like opening um, level positions or whatever or asking for like three years experience or whatever. And he's like, and I don't have any. I just I'm trying to get in. Um, here, here's the baseline of it, guys. Seriously, if your work is good, you'll you'll get looked at. Uh, it, it's, it's all about the work. Um, if your portfolio is strong, you know, get on ArtStation, post your stuff. Um, you know, that's going to be a, a good way to get to get noticed. We look at ArtStation all the time. I look at ArtStation like every day. Um, and so I, th I think once you're once you've developed your skills enough to where you want to start um, posting to a place like that, uh, I think then start thinking about a like I was saying before. Um, there, there, there's two kind of main questions that that you want to think about. One is um, can I make like what they make? Am I making, you know, in the style that they, they, am I creating things that, that could fit the style of their game? Because that's a big thing, right? Like we need to, you know, studios are looking to bring people in that can jump in and help help their teams uh, develop. Um, I'm going to flip this dude back. Oh no, and no, I feel like I over, over smudged him. Um, but, uh, you know, and, th and then the other one is like, do they say anything? Are they saying anything like uh, with their art? Are they saying anything new that maybe we could grab and, and and add to our team and infuse either like a new perspective or new ideas or a new take on characters? Um, I think those are the two kinds of things that um, are most likely to if you if you can check that both of those boxes, you'll be in like you know a list of finalists um, in terms of like you know being considered for 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 work at, at Riot or anywhere really. I would imagine. All right, all right, guys, we're gonna move on to. I'm going to drop this opacity. We're going to start doing a little cleanup. Yo, 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 yo. All right. 
Maybe it's okay. it's maybe it's a good time to uh, remind our viewers about the contest that is going to, going to happen yes, after the stream. Yeah. Uh, so you are also invited to share your versions of this art that you see on the screen right now uh, via Twitter. So while you're sharing your art pieces, don't forget to mention at Playroom Terra and use hashtag hashtag Draw with Riot. Winners will get cool in-game prizes, and the first winner. Uh, gets the gets the chance to meet and uh, make a one-on-one -on -one with Chris after the stream. So uh, if you need more information, uh, I think right now there will be some links in the chat that you can click and read the article and have more information. I right, see. Por Poros have like little dinky little finger claws. All right. Are you excited yeah. to meet these guys online? Am I? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. I love meeting like players. Um it, it it's 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 amazing when one of the best things I can I I don't even know if I can describe it, but like when players get a hold of of characters that we've worked on and give them like a life of their own, not just like playing them, but when they start showing up in memes and you see people do like cool fan art of it, man. You see fan art and you're like, "Oh, that dude's better than I am." Wow. Um it's awesome. It's so awesome. And um, it's 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 one of the like great joys of being able to work at a place like Riot is just the the, the feeling of um, I don't know seeing seeing characters get embraced and and turned into their own thing like it's 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 kind of freaking magic. Um, so a chance to like to hang out and like chat with a player like for sure let's do it that sounds awesome I'm excited. Also, um, how long do they have to do this? Like, I know the details they are have, out there, but they, they yeah, have like a week. It's a, it's a good question. It's it's uh, it ends at first uh, of June, and let me check the time. It should be twelve. Uh, I mean, let me check. Yeah, it's it's the first of June. Uh, yeah, it's the first of June. That's that's the short okay. answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the end of the day. Word it, was, it was 12. Yeah, it was 12 p.m. BSC. Cool. Yep. Yeah, and you guys, honestly, like, you know, I'll tell you, um, I think I think I get to, am I, am I a part of looking at, like, the finalists and all that stuff? I think I am. Um, I would say, like, I just want to see you guys' style, man. Like, take this character, and, like, that's one of the things that I, I just love about this kind of stuff, and, and seeing art come in from the community is, like, like I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm just excited to see how how people take these things and and draw them in different styles, different ways. There might be some stuff I need to fix on this, dude. Anyway, sorry, I'm trying to look up in potatoes. Sky, I don't know what Sky Merch Z is saying, but yeah, man, freaking potatoes, dude. <laughs> I love fries. All right. So I actually say too, like um, one of the little things that I'm doing here is like I'm I'm not drawing in uh, black, um, and this is just like small stuff that I do. But like when I'm going to work in color, um, I, uh, I I try to always kind of like use a little bit of color even when I'm sketching things like that, just to sort of lead me to the final final palette, that kind of thing. Just a little bitty nugget. Where's my center line on this, bro? Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Keep keep throwing questions at me, guys. I don't mind talking. I'll try to I'll try to draw and talk a little bit more. Sort of breaking. What's up. what's your favorite champ in Runeterra Fantasy World? Uh, Bonnie forty eight sixty nine asks. Okay. So are we talking we talking like in lore now? Or are we just talking about like League of Legends Runeterra? It says Runeterra Fantasy World, but it say it also says favorite champ. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go broad, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this up for for the folks. Wait, no, where is it? Oh, out, oh, out. Oh. Bard tattoo. Um, yeah, Bard was the first champ I worked on when I came to to League, so he has a special heart place in my heart. Plus, I'm a, I'm a huge Ghibli fan. Can't really tell, but I got my Miyazaki T-shirt on for good luck. Mm -hmm. Um. So probably probably Bardo, yeah, 
Um, but I mean, I love lots of champs, man. The champ that got me into league and got me pointed at league was uh, was Jax. Um, I don't know, man. Big purple, multi-eyed, you know, roughneck dude. Like that's cool. But do you but play yeah. bard? I have. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I actually have. I mean, the question is, <laughs> do you yeah, play? I I have played him. Um, actually, dude, I wasn't bad, man. I got I'm S tier with him. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've got some. I got games. I got I got some games in with them, but um, but I've also and and I hope there's uh, some of my buddies that I've played with. I've had some of the most hilarious and awful like game ruining mishaps with him too, um, and uh, <laughs> it reminds me of back when I was uh, working on on League. Uh, we were playing games every day just as a team, and we had been watching a streamer who would play like a super aggro bard. Um, and I was definitely playing more of your standard, like, try to be slippery and helpful bard. Um, and so I decided to, like, you know, after watching two streams or something, I was like, all right, I'm going to try this aggro bard thing. I'm going to invade at, like, you know, 30 seconds in. And I'm going to go try to, like, get in there and, and you know, we're going to we're gonna take out their, you know, their bot lane and, and try to snag, you know, one of the camps and do all this stuff. I died like six times in the first two minutes, man. <laughs> well, like, it was like game was totally trashed because I just was awful. Uh, and uh, it was funny. One of, one of my good friends uh, made a nice poster for me with like called Agro Bardo. Um, it was like a little bard mask with a freaking with like angry eyebrows. It was it was awesome. I deserve all the scorn for it, but it was fun, man. I mean, you know, I got I got really messed up. I got really messed up. Well, we are but not also, Dumbledore. <laughs> There's a Turkish yeah. player, you know, maybe the name Dumbledore. He plays so super aggressive, uh, bar. Yeah. And yeah, it's really hard, dude. I got it. I know, man. It's like, and, and there's been certain certain patches where, like, you know, the way that the way that an item works here, or there, where he gets gets a little little stronger, at least like early game. You know, like he is, his, um, you know, he's he's a little stronger. Those kinds of things and. It don't matter for me, man. I'm just, I got to play like hang back and give health buffs and make little tunnels in the wall bard. So how do you feel about the progress that we have um, made in 30 minutes? Um, pretty good, man. I actually probably got to speed up a little bit. I want to get you guys most uh, most of a done mm -hmm. thing. But um, it's actually, it's it's not too bad, you know? Uh, I like the pose. Um, mm -hmm. He's a little bit, I feel like he's maybe a little bit wonky. But whatever, we're jamming, you know, we're doing this, doing this live. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm liking it. I'm, I'm, I have like some details in here that I like. And um, I'm not, I don't, I don't love the shape of his little mustache here, but I can fix that in, in as I'm rendering as well. Um, and yeah, man, like, you know, we're going to have the lightning. He's got like, you know, I'm not going to give him the the full like Vola Bear, like, you know, stuff, the, the ice that's coming out of his... Um, of his back that's pretty aggro so i decided just to give him like wild hair that we can make all like zappy and electrified later maybe um but i'm pretty happy with it i don't know i hope you guys are enjoying it uh maybe maybe you guys are just like speed up dude but um gonna gonna i think people will love your chat but people will also want to view this as well so yeah it's sorry it, it, yeah. if it's not for everybody oh no um, but we'll get to it. I promise. I promise. You know, you guys, we're gonna see a, a colorized anger poro. We'll we'll ground plane there. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think, man? Is this guy coming along all right? Like, does he look like an angry poro? I guess that's the base, the base thing. You know. I'm looking at chat, and they're like, "No, we don't like it, dude. Start over." Just kidding. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, getting. Yeah, people so are happy. Getting to this stage. Yeah, man, I just want you guys to be entertained and hope I'm also answering some actual, like, decent questions. Or not, the questions are decent. I'm saying giving decent answers. <laughs> and then here we go. Little bitty inside mouth. Uh. All right. Oh, the teeth made so much difference. Oh, yeah, man, this guy's legit. If you don't know, you gotta avoid this dude. All right. Oliver, if you're out there, I hope you're watching this. Give me the vibes, man. Give me the good vibes. Okay, cool. So this is our little angry Poro boy. 
Um, let's see, I'm gonna drop out that and see what we have. Sometimes you can kind of learn a little bit about your drawing when you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The shoulder starts a little bit higher. Okay, I'm not gonna overworry it. Sorry, not gonna be probably the most perfect Poro, but I'm okay ish with it. All right, so there you go. You guys, does everybody at least agree that it looks like an angry little Poro? And I think we can we can slide on from there. We're gonna do like lots of like zappies. Zabat. Okay, um, sweet. So at this stage, I'll show you guys. Uh, this is something else that I prepped ahead of time. Um, I don't normally prep color palette as much ahead of time. Sometimes. You know, when we're working in lore, like if you are going to go to a certain region that has a color palette associated with it, like um, think about Darius, you know, they got that sort of like smoky gunmetal armor um, and like the red cloaks and stuff like that. So like Noxus's color palette is sort of in that like, you know, dark um, metallic colors also, you know, to, with, the, with the red pop, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, in this case, I sort of like jumped ahead a little bit um, and we'll kind of zoom and, and just created myself like a little like kind of fur ball, um, a, a little poro ball here to uh, uh, to give myself an idea as to what colors I was going to use. Um, Volibear and the Freljord and all that stuff, man, they some cold dudes. So uh, a lot of their their palette is very cool. Um, so one thing that I like to usually do is start with a kind of a base underlayer that I just scribble in. Um, it's kind of like toning your palette um, or toning, sorry, your your canvas. Um, and for this case. Uh, actually, um, I'm going to do a little bit of kind of like a muted purple, uh, lavender -y color just to bring a little bit of warmth to the base of him. So then as I work in the cools, he'll have a little bit of that color balance and not be um, not be like all cool, you know. And um, anyway, so and I like to do like I was saying, uh, I do rendering and color basically like I was working with pencils, you know. I mean, I, I just don't. There are so many cool ways to render, by the way, and Photoshop has a lot of them. Um, I, uh, I don't know that many, so I will just do it this way. And maybe it'll help you guys, because maybe it'll, like, um, maybe some of you guys that definitely love to draw and, and jam on jam in your sketchbook but don't like to be, you know, engaged digitally so much because of all the stuff in the interface, like, maybe this will help a little bit. Um, anyway, so I've gone to a slightly bigger brush, and I'm going to start working in, and literally, guys, like, I'm just going to color this in like I was sitting at like a restaurant when I'm seven and I was given something to keep me busy. Get his leg There's here. also another... Oh, I'm sorry. Do it. I'm sorry. No, 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 man. It's There's also another answer. question from uh, Mitzel. Uh They ask, tell us your artwork in Legends of Runeterra you are most proud of. Artwork that I'm most proud of. Um... I don't know, man. Like the the Stormclaw dude's pretty cool. Um, you know, like I said, it's always the the illustrators that kind of take it and and make it its final final version. Um, the Neverglade Collector honestly was really fun. Like I really enjoyed concepting that one. <laughs> um, but I don't know, man. Like Thorny Toad, I did that guy, and he's just so grumpy, and that's fun. Um. You know, one of my, my my favorite stories is actually from the uh, the Snapvine. Um, I was talking to um, what do you guys know him as like maybe Riot Umbridge, but um, uh, Andrew Yip, our uh, uh, one of our like lead, I think he's our lead designer, or I forget what his official title is, but he's like super important. Anyway, <laughs> um, but that dude, uh, he was he was working on designing some set two stuff, and he came over and he was like, "Hey, man, we need like." another unit for Shadow Isles. We need something else to go along with Maokai and, and these kind of plant beasts that we were working on. And I was like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I had kind of a loose idea of, like, a plant hydra or something. And, like, just, like, with no approval, like, no concept sketch, no process, he was just like, done. Love it. We're making it. So I got, like, pre-approved to just go draw <laughs> this, like, uh, thing. Which, I mean, you know, we're we're... We have to move fast and make decisions, but that's a pretty fast, like, yeah, we're done here. This is, that's, that's a great idea. Love it. Anyway, so I didn't really answer his question. Um, I think SMV took the, the Terror of the Tides, that big, like, monster ghost ship, 
Mm -hmm. um, and really like killed it. I think that illustration and they added stuff to it, man. They added like the shark jaws and stuff like that. I think like that are all like tied to it, man. They they they're awesome and um, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, I guess that's one of those like lay mode like I love them all, man. But I do. They're awesome. It's it's so fun to see them to see what like the illustrators come back and, and turn our little scribbles into. All right, so now I'm going in with a little bit smaller brush again, just to kind of fill in and get a little bit better edge. Again, you guys, like, I actually have a very like pretty simple process. Um, and it's one that I actually was able to kind of develop further on working on um, Legends of Runeterra, because we have so many concepts to work on that um, it, it was like, dude, it was like going to like grad school, you know, it's like you're you work at a studio, you work with like a bunch of um, amazing artists and you're just cranking on character after character after character. Um, and I feel like it really helped me kind of find like a nice uh, color process that works for me. Um, working on lore, like, or I'm sorry, on lol, uh, I would work in color and do renders and stuff. But like most of my like my strength was always, you know, uh, st storytelling through through uh, characters and, and the design elements and stuff. Oh, I see it. I see it. I'm gonna answer that. I see the Skeezix question. I got you. Um, anyway, so, you know, I think like I've, I've like gone to like art school being back to art school being on, on lore. Um, anyway, okay. So we, we see big, angry, purple Poro. Every, every, yeah, we got that. Is that what's showing up? Um, so this is like my base coat. Uh, and, and what I'm gonna do now is start to um, kind of rough in uh just where the color is going to change a little bit um and kind of get like a scent like a, a basic map of of like what i want the individual local color of things to be um and then to answer your question about skeezix um skeezix actually uh was my dog's name my my first dog and uh he got that name i think from um an old comic like called gas station alley like from back in like the 20s or something um and uh Anyway, so it's I, I named myself that because like I love that dog and uh, I don't know it just was weird like nobody's called Skeezix so that's it oh dude avoid Poro would be awesome would be awesome I'm not gonna do it but it would be awesome <laughs> <laughs> all right let me see here let me see Mister Simpson enough work okay. for you today <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, if we get Oliver to do it, he'll come draw you guys Void Poro. All right, let's see here. We're going to flip canvas real quick. Yeah, he's a little bunched up on that side. Okay. We have to work on it. <clears throat> okay. All right, guys. So um, now I have my little color notes here. I think I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of drop in some basic, basic color. Uh, no, 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 no. Get something. See, I'm just color picking from the fur ball I already made. Normally, I would sort of like look around for a color. You know, like I might actually go over here in the um, in my my color wheel and and base off of like you know he's going to have this kind of white feeling fur, but you know you don't want to make things just straight white. You know, it, it wouldn't it would show up on a page. You want to give some pigment to it. Um, also, like in games, this is one of those like Moby uh, Frankie kind of things that he taught us. He's you know at Riot, an amazing, amazing artist. Um, does lots of like talks. It's been to like um, uh, anyway, just talks all over the world and stuff. Um, phenomenal artist, and and he was always telling us about like just you never go to all the way to white, never go all the way to black. Um, for one thing, in games and like actual on screen, like it flickers and makes kind of a unsatisfying thing happens visually. But also just in art, um, you know, if you go into the to black, it like muddies up your color palette, um, and white just feels you know very blown out. So. Um, Anyway, and some of the stuff is probably like too art classy, maybe I don't know. But um, but these are just things that I really do think about as I'm still working, and I'm like, okay, that's too bright, or that's too like stark white. I need to come down. I want this to feel like it's white, but I want it to have some pigment. So I landed on this kind of a muted blue thing, um, and uh, and we go we go and get in. Let's see if there's any more. Actually, it's one one of the. Pop, like one of the features of this uh, stream is to give more like an art masterclass uh, feel or vibe. Very cool. Well, yes. So I, I'm learning as well with the players. I'm learning a lot of stuff. 
And there was one question, but I don't want to bother you with a lot of questions because you have to make some progress and you'll be mad at me if I no, ask we're good. a lot of... <laughs> hit, me, hit me. It's, it's okay. fine. It's fine. Like, I'm, I'm just... Now I'm that coloring. That was a question that asked, like, if you ever use Zoom, because you never used Zoom until now, what's the right time uh, to use the Zoom or not? Uh, so you're talking like when you're drawing, like zooming yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I use it all the time. Um, right now, I'm still like in kind of the bigger, mm -hmm. like I'm still working on the 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 whole character. As I get into like trying to like render some parts of this, I'll probably zoom in. Um, I'm also trying to be cognizant of how much I'm doing it because, like, for you guys, it's like jarring to be like, "Whoa, he's in, he's out, he's in." So, um, so anyway, I, I, I'm just kind of like maybe not using it as much. But right now, you know, for this like kind of simple character, I just don't need it yet. But I do, I use it. Um, if you're talking about like when I would use it, I definitely would wait until I had like my bigger shapes and stuff in. Like even if I was working on a more complicated character, maybe with armor and stuff, like I would I would make sure I had the pose and anatomy and stuff down, um, and then I would go over top of that and and lay in armor and, and try to figure out like the large, medium, small shapes to the best of my ability, um, like the actual like armor bits and and those kinds of things. And then I would sort of go in and be like, okay. Now, what motif do I want? You know, like if you had, say, you had a guy that was like, um, I don't know, like, say he's, a, he's an armored dude, but you want his armor to be like lion themed or something. Um, I would probably rough in some of those shapes within the armor, but then I would use like a zoom to go in and actually like start to develop those details. And, and I do, I do lots of like do a layer, draw over it, you know, drop down opacity, draw a detail on top, see if I like that detail before I commit to it, like on the same layer. Um, I do a lot more of that kind of stuff when I'm working just by myself. Like I said, I sort of like cheated ahead a little bit and, and got some stuff done for you guys. So I so I had an actual, at least a hope of getting this done, um, you know, before, uh, before two or three hours are up. But I would say, yeah, you don't, don't, don't zoom too quick, work loose. Get your big shapes in, get your character feeling, you know, attitude wise, like you want. And then and then you can kind of start to go in and zoom in all you want. Well, let's not forget that we are also going to have a five minute break in like 15 or 20 minutes. I will let you okay. know. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. you know, it's it's very early in the United States and it's time for get, get refreshed, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I've had uh, had some extra coffee, you guys, to make sure I'm good and awake for you. I mean, I'm always up. I have two kids, so like my day starts at like 6, 6.30. Um, but it is still early to to invite all you lovely people into my home to talk with. So extra coffee means bathroom breaks. Again, just as a reminder, uh, this piece is not going to be in the game, but it's rather an art stream inspired by Runeterra Universe. So it's it's important to mention here. And if you want more information about the contest, there's a link in the chat that you can visit and read the details. If you have further questions, we are here for you. <laughs> I see somebody <laughs> hit me up, man, saying, hey, take a bigger brush. I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. But like, this is, this is my true little style. Like... Um, you're right. You're right. It, it would go faster with a bigger brush, but there's just like my brain just goes to a good place when I'm doing it like this. You know, um, uh, it's it's just one of those things where it's like as I've done more and more art pieces, you just find things that you know it's not always uh, the most efficient, but it just puts my head like in a place where you know I'm learning like as I'm going through and scribbling all this in, I'm like acquainting myself with all of the little shapes like of the mustache and and just kind of like continuing to think and, and develop the character as I go. Um, but to uh, to that to that poster's note, you're right. Yeah, that would be smart to to go with a bigger brush. I uh, I agree. There will be there will be other artists hopefully that do these and they will use nice big brushes and be smart. So another right, simple look at that. question here. <laughs> yeah. Now he's getting starting to look like a poro, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, yeah. Sorry, you gonna ask a question? Go for it. Yes, I I, I shared this question. Lizbox asked. Uh, sorry for the noob question. That's also my view on my question. Not at all. No, no. Each of each of my questions. 
Uh, but we want to learn that. Why have you colored everything in dark if you're going to overpaint it with another color? That might um, be a standard for art, but like I I'm so yeah. I'm not aware of the, this one. So I um, there's a lot of ways to do it. I, I, I layer up to I, I usually start like muted and darker and I layer to get lighter. Um, it's just it's it's a way of first of all getting like a unified color palette. I, I, I find it hard to jump in and know that like the exact hue and value of you know the fur on this section or the horn on this part and all that stuff. So this gives me an opportunity to, um, just like toning your canvas, it, it gives me a chance to uh, build from a place. So I'm making decisions based off of this kind of like purple lavender color in the backdrop, which will mean that as I develop out from there or as I like layer on top of that, um, like, you know, oil painting, you know, you, you layer up lots of stuff. Um, so it's kind of a similar thing for me where I'm just, I use it as a way to make sure that at the end, I'm going to have a color palette that feels unified. Um, rather than like jumping into like all the different colors if that makes if that makes sense that, it's kind of how my brain works i know some people um do this kind of thing some people probably don't um you know again i don't know yeah this is this is just how i found it uh and, and i've also tried a bunch of different techniques that i've learned from some of the like again amazing artists i work with and this is just part of like finding out how your brain works and and what leads you to a to a a solid kind of ending point you know Yeah, right. It might be too dark. We might have to mess with this later. But trust me, guys, I will get it there. It'll be light and it'll have like cool zappy highlights and it'll look pretty poor OE. When when I done, yo. He's dark because he's tarot poor terror poro, man. He's moody. <laughs> He's angry. All right, and it's, let's do this. it's awesome that like it, even if the smallest details give a lot of like different perspective and it's like it feels so much powered with small touches. <laughs> yeah. I uh I don't know, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get in there. Cause so like this is one of those things too, guys, like um in terms of just like the, the drawing part of it. Um, like adding in like this kind of stuff, uh, like think of, I wanted this guy to be tough and aggressive. So like, I, I wanted to add in extra little puffs of like little sharp shapes around him. Um, those are little things, right. That as you're drawing a character and you're trying to bring out the, the personality and the type of character it is, like if you want to be dangerous, you want to use sharper shapes in the silhouette. So those are some of those things that I'm doing too with this guy is making sure that, uh, the way that he reads, like even at a silhouette, you know, level, is like you would see, oh, this guy's an aggressive little dude. Like, um, especially when you're talking about developing for game stuff, you know, like as a player, you want to be able to to grab a character or see a character and know, like, is this thing going to help me? Is it going to hurt me? Um, do I have to fight it? Like, if I do have to fight it, like, what's it going to do? Um, all those kinds of things and those expectations are stuff that we want to try to build in visually when we're working on a character um, from the beginning. I think his I think his horns might come down a little lower. Than I had him originally. Not me. Yeah, and then you'll see, you guys. Like again, I have a very, 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 very simplified way of of working. So, um, I will actually, before we're done, I will flatten the line on top of the color, and then I will render over all of it, uh, just because that's just how I layer. Um, it just, it again, it's it's kind of that whole simplicity thing where, like, I just want to keep like complication out of my head while I'm working. And so the the quicker I can get, yeah, he's totally a cannibal, Poro. Um, the quicker I can can get to like you know single layers of working and stuff like that. I don't know. It just it, it helps me stay organized and keeps my brain from melting. Because it can be really paralyzing to to try to to want to create an art piece, but spend a lot of time. Um, worrying about like the technique of it. I mean, it's off. That's why we have to like practice and and all that stuff. But I, I've found that like not every technique works for everybody, and different people get to really awesome results in different ways. So it's funny though, man. You guys are all busting me out on my like 
<laughs> All the things that I do that are slow. It's true. Let's see, alright, we gotta get this guy a little metal. A little metal action. Let's see, hopefully this guy turns out. Dink. Hmm. This one's boxier than this one. See, when you scribble quick, got some stuff to solve. Right, we'll leave those edges in for now. So yeah, hit me up with any more questions, guys. For real, it's not it's not a it's not a burden at all to uh, chat with you guys. So I'm gonna drop in some some teeth color, mm -hmm. and you see here I, I picked the the fur color because it's kind of like a very muted blue. I think I'm gonna like push his teeth a little bit warmer, maybe a little darker, and I want him to have a little bit of pigment. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, there you go. But like, right? Like you think of teeth, and you're like, oh, teeth are white. A lot of times, teeth are unfortunately yellow. Um, but this way, it's like I can get that warm kind of like tooth thing going on, but have it differ from the cool fur. And I'll, I'll clean all this up, y'all. We'll get there. And then since these these the little bitty ones are further back in the mouth, we should probably warm them up a touch since they're surrounded by a warmer color. There's one and question they, asking you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I always interrupt you. No, that's that's good, you guys. Seriously, because like otherwise, I'm sitting here listening to myself talk, and like I don't. <laughs> that, I'm a, that's not really my jam. Okay, so the question says, uh, "Do you like Bob Ross? Because Twitch chat loves Bob Ross a lot." Bob Ross is amazing. I grew up. I grew up on Bob Ross, man. My dad and I would sit and watch Bob Ross like on a Sunday morning. Like I'm talking like back when it was on like PBS, legit. Um. And like we would watch him, you know, hold like he'd have a squirrel in his pocket and he'd be painting happy trees and like, you know, oh, this cloud's lonely. Let's give it a friend. That kind of stuff. <laughs> his storytelling is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, so is his afro, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And now the chat goes with Bob Ross. Yes, yes. That's okay. yes. That's where it's at. You guys are absolutely right. Everybody here is correct. So much Bob Ross. Damn. So do Poros have bottom lips? Let's see. Let's see if I grabbed it. Not really. At least not these ones. Okay. So maybe he doesn't have so much of a bottom lip. Is that the same color? Psst, that's the same color, man. So again, like this is this is my cheat for today. It's just to kind of get oh, it's the same color. Okay, screw it. We're gonna do it this. Yeah. Little monster angry poro guy. Can, can you guys hear my cat? My cat's meowing in the background. I just heard once. There you go. No regular. <laughs> my cat's name is Huckleberry, you guys. Sorry if you. I have two of them. To... Yeah, man. They're... Cats are awesome. Yeah, they're fun. They will come mess up your Google Chats hangout. <laughs> All right. I, I think this is. A little bit too strong of a red, but we'll come back to it. All right, all right. Um, okay, so you know, I, I'm not going to drop in the. Um, actually, you know what? We'll we'll drop in some shadow shapes before we before we move on. Uh, while you're shaping the shadows, uh, there's a question. Barbie Comstock ask uh, asks, "I'm kind of kind of scared to start in this art thing." Like scared to fail and my art sucks. Do you have any advice on that struggle? Oh man, me too, dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing about art, man. I, I think if you love it, like if you, if it is your passion, you know, if it's the thing that you would do, um, you know, whether somebody's watching or not, you know, if it's the kind of thing where when you're making art, um, like I, I actually came back to art. I, I drew a lot as a kid, and then I left it in my twenties. Like I went to college the first time, um, and got like an English degree, and did all kinds of like, you know, not art stuff because I just I loved it. But I just I you know I grew up in Ohio, and I didn't really have a lot of avenues of like, oh man, you can definitely make art for a living. You know, it's like everybody would be like, yeah, you want to be an artist? Well, that's cool. What are you gonna do with it? Um, so, but I realized after a while, like. I even tried like the writing thing for a long time and I was actually a reporter for a little while. Um, and I, I liked writing okay. It was still somewhat creative. 
But it was like, I would always sit down to write and it would it would be the kind of thing where it's like, okay, I, I would set a timer and I would make myself write for like two hours. When I eventually came back to art, um, it was because like I realized like art's the one thing that when I sat down, it wasn't like I was watching a clock to see like how long I'd done it. It was like, I would look up and it would have been like five hours. And my mom would be like, your dinner's cold, where are you at? Um, so like time moved differently. I, I, there was nothing else in the world when I was making art. And if that's how you feel about it, like if that's kind of your vibe, you just love it, then like just work at it, man. You know, just keep working at it and, and you'll get better and and don't be afraid to share it. And, um, you know, nobody starts off like, you know, a genius. You know what I mean? Like, um, I think start off like one thing, too, is like, you know, study the, the art styles that you like and try to emulate those and um like really study them you know not just like like there's there's kind of a difference between being like oh i i love this like this i don't know pixar film or i love this video game you buy the art book and you just sort of like imagine like how cool it is but like that's that's enjoying it but i'm saying study it like start looking at like how do they like how do they do like their characters like silhouettes and anatomy and like what like what shape language do they do they actually use and are they like you know, do they render things very, very realistically or are they very stylized? And anyway, study that stuff and then try to emulate that. Try to work on those things, you know, and, and build and build a style for yourself. A lot of times people ask to like, I'm going off on all kinds of stuff, man. Um, a lot of times people ask, they're like, hey, how do you like develop a style? Um, and in all honesty, like a style, I think, comes from the things that you're stealing from the people that you admire, you know, and, and you mash them up and it becomes your own. It's how you, it's not, I mean, it's, I say stealing, but I mean that in a good way. It's, it resonates with you, you know, and when you see, yeah, when you see it and you're like, wow, like that person, you know, or that style or that, that cartoon or, or that, um, movie or what have you, like the way they make characters mean something to me. I, it, 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 yeah, it inspires me. Um, start working on it, you know, because you won't you won't make it just like they did. There will be elements of you because those elements will match up with other art that made you feel that way, and then they sort of align with like what your skill level is at that time, and you kind of start to develop a style and let it evolve in those things. And um, you know, and then the last part is is like really truly like be honest with yourself. You know, if you're not at the level that you want to be, like just. Just be humble, be honest about it, and ask for feedback. You know, see, um, see if you know you can get opinions that help you dissect what's working and what's not. And uh, and some of that's tricky, you know, because you know your mom might think everything's amazing, um, <laughs> and she's right. You're awesome, love it. But you know, maybe if you find you know people that you trust that have a bit of a of an understanding of what you're trying to achieve with your art. Um, you know, you can you can create a community and get feedback from it, that kind of thing. You can I'm also ask your dad, like he won't like it. Yeah, no, I'm right. kidding. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was I was thinking that too. I was like, I'm not trying to bust on anybody's mom, man. Hey, moms are great. <laughs> yeah, moms are great. Uh, uh, another question, but a comment that is very beautiful. I, I want to share it with you. For the for the two kill says your tempo is perfect to draw along to. Oh, nice! Very cool. Oh, that's that's awesome. I hope uh, I hope to see what you make. Okay, so we will have a pause in a short time, which is in one minute. Okay. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do then. We'll call this solid enough that I'm going to merge down these layers. So we're going to take that off. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's a five minutes break, so don't go anywhere. And you can, by the way, you can uh, use that five minutes to review the article if you want to draw this beautiful poro today as well cool. we are adding a cooldown and you can also follow that cooldown to know about when we are when we are back okay all right all right so are we we good to to take a quick break yeah everybody let's go then all right cool yeah, yeah let's do a break and um five minutes. like five minutes we'll be back okay Sounds good. All right. I will see everybody in like five minutes.
Yes, we are back. We are back and I want to remind you the contest details. If you are willing to draw, if you are interested in drawing, if you are not but you want to draw, uh, you're also invited to share your versions of this art via Twitter. Please don't forget to mention Playroom Terra and use the hashtag draw with Riot. I said if you're interested because we have the prize, the fifth prize for the funniest work. Ooh. Yeah, funniest work sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the funniest one, work can the funniest yeah. work also win? Yeah, it it wins. It wins <laughs> the fifth prize. <laughs> Troll right. right. I I love that. I love that hashtag by the way. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Blackbird. Thank you. Appreciate you. Oh, wait. Is that orange poro? No, it's folly bear, but an orange poro would be cool. Um, let's see here. Okay, sorry guys. Um, so real quick, uh, I I've dropped in or I've I've merged all my layers, my line art, with um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. that's it. Sorry, I've just dropped my line art back onto my color layer that I was doing underneath it. Uh, again, this is that whole thing of like where I'm just trying to simplify everything as much as possible. Um, and I've created just a new layer on top um, that I will, you'll see like multiple times through this, I will uh, uh, merge down as I like the results of whatever I'm working on on the layer ahead. You know, this is one of those things like, this is what digital gives you. So you, you can kind of mess around with, um, uh, you know, trying things and seeing what works and you can easily get rid of it, which obviously if you're working in your sketchbook, it's like, if it's there, it's there. Okay, so... Uh, here I'm actually I've grabbed a little bit darker color. I'm gonna kind of like work in some areas of um, ambient occlusion, which is just where like the shadows are, are deepest, you know. And I'm gonna kind of tool around a little bit here and and, and see see which which part I want to do next because this is kind of all just gonna be about rendering this guy up to a place where I feel like he's he's getting finished. Um, so I'm sort of gonna, at this point, like I kind of just cast around and, you know, look for the next thing that I really want to develop all the way up. Now, this time I have a question for the chat. If you want to name this Poro, what would you give um on, i think name this poro but oh, not okay, yeah, right, right. <laughs> oh yeah 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 sorry man my bad you're right god uncouth need to let these guys name it color out that all right um let's see, let's see, let's see. try to grab his lighter do we have names coming in angry poro chonks chonks is real Roro, <laughs> Valioro, Poro Bear. I like the Volabino. It it sounds like a football player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Goal, Volabino. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. Hangry Poro. <laughs> he is man. He hasn't had his. He hasn't had his. But I think chunks is good. Yeah, man, Chunks is pretty cool. Feels chunky. So this is one of the things too, man. It's like you guys got me uh, rendering up fur, and that always takes a while. I got me rendering up fur. Nobody made me do it. But as you can see, like I'm just trying to establish kind of like an area where the light's hitting a little bit more. Because since Aporo is just covered in fur, you know, you got to work to um, you know what I'm saying. You got to work to give it visual interest. Yeah. But it's going to fall off because he's a roundy guy. He's a round boy. 
So as as we go down the body, the light's going to hit, you know, more on top, but like a ball, it's going to fall off as we go down, and then under here is going to be dark. So <laughs> gotta hit his hit his brows. We might have to we might have to like angry up these brows, man. I don't know if these are intense enough. As you can see, this is like this is the kid with coloring book. I also like the Thoro. Thoro, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Thoro is cool. I don't know, man. Chonk, Chonk has a ring to it, you know. <laughs> Maybe we could add like Chonka Bear or something. I don't know. <clears throat> don't worry though. We're going to add lightning later, you guys. It's going to be rad. Uh, my uh, Oliver, um, one of our, the concept artists that uh, is uh, the, the sort of the father of the Poro, uh, he was in fact watching. And um, he, he has given me his blessing on our boy Chonks here. Oh. So we're in we're in good we're in good territory. So as you can see too, I'm starting to kind of render over top of um Ha! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, the other concept artists are, are chiming in. And Oliver heard my name drop of him. Chonks it is. They called him they called him Chonks. So I think Chonks is sticking. It's already it's already becoming a thing. Yes, I am on Instagram. I think, do we have that stuff out? I saw somebody, I try to post like lore art and stuff when I, when I can, just other drawings. It's also just Skeezix though, if it's anywhere around here. I think it's also worth to mention that like, if you are planning to enter this contest, uh, we expect people to create your version. We want to see your version of this art. Like, yeah, it's. I think. Can you comment on this one? Like, what are the tips for the people who are watching that you can give that they can take their own version of this art piece? Well, yeah. Um, I mean, like, like I was kind of trying to mention a little bit. Um, I I love seeing what you know the style that different people work in. You know. Um, so I, I think it's just kind of like, you know, take the details or whatever of this little guy, but let's like, I just, I, I want to see different people's like, you know, you don't have to draw it just like me, you know, draw this character, but draw it like you would draw it. You know, that's kind of what I think I'm, I'm most interested in is to see what people can, can do with it and to see how like their personality comes out. Um, I don't know if that, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but yeah, that's, that's totally, kind of how totally. I how I think about it is like I just I want to see what what people what people like do with it how it feels you know happy little trees man happy little trees you guys draw your own happy trees <laughs> hmm oh snap. So this is one of those areas too where I gotta be I gotta be careful because sometimes like you start to get a little bit like you know antsy and you want to like go in and put like the cool like zap of lightning in early or something, but we'll do it soon. But I'm um, you know you always gotta kind of follow the process, follow the process. But I think I can answer questions while I'm scribbling. Yeah. See more Bob Ross. That's what's up. <laughs> I 
I don't know, man. Is, anybody, is everybody excited about Volibear? I think he looks cool. You know, what, what, what I would like, I would love you streaming a lot more. And I think an emoji, a Twitch emoji, <laughs> with your headphones and headgear would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah, you're working. And <laughs> like, it's so cool to watch uh, someone draw and make progress live. Like, like for me, it's relaxing. I don't know, Chad, what, what do you think? Huh. Make a Baron here, Ram. Huh? Folly doesn't feel strong enough in game, huh? Saw somebody say he doesn't feel kind of weak. I know, man. Folly's supposed to be tough. Yeah, everyone is loving this stream, and it's it's chill for everyone. Cool. That's that's awesome. Just Netflix and chill. Well, stream and chill. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's what's up. Hey, people toss in, and I don't know if we can collect this, but I love getting like music, um, uh, like music recommendations for like just stuff to zone out to and work. So if people can toss in, like, what do you guys, what, what do you guys listen to, man? Like, I want to know what's up. Cause I, you know, normally like right now I'm not listening to music so I can kind of be thinking and, and chatting with you guys, but normally I would be like way deep on some tunes. I can start with mine. I'm always into metal music, so. Yeah? Yeah, true, true metal head here. You got, you got some, you got some going right now? No, <laughs> I'm listening yeah? to you. <laughs> you, 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 you multi-sourcing or multi, uh, which is multitasking, man. Multitasking. Nah, nah. Yeah, like I actually like I listen to like um a lot of different genres actually, like classical yeah. music, lo-fi hip hop. Yeah, I see lo-fi hip hop a lot while yeah. people create yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. Taylor Swift, right? Nobody wants to admit it, but everybody listens to her. Well, he wrote in caps, or she? I don't know, but he right. wrote in caps, so he wants people to know. I, I guess I guess I should say that as a 38 year old dude, <laughs> you're like, nah, man. You know, I don't know about Taylor Swift. But then, like, when you're, you know, when it comes on the radio, you're like, I know this song. I'm gonna jam to it. <laughs> She's good, man. She knows how to write a catchy tune. Uh, like, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm also uh, dealing with music, and I always find catchy things uh, get my focus off. Do you feel uh, that way? Sure. Yeah, sometimes depends on what I'm doing. Drawing's not so bad, but if I have to like, if I have to like be typing something or, you know, I can't like write or construct, you know, thoughts and also listen to music that has words that I know and stuff like that. By the way, what people I, are pe pe people are asking if it if they can watch this as v VOD as well. Yes, they will be a VOD of this uh, stream. Cool. And Alice Sellers asked, "What's what was the most complicated art you did for Riot Games?" The most complicated, huh? Yeah. Dang. Um. Well, that's you know that's kind of one of those things where it's like, is it is it a champion or? Um. I mean, Orin was pretty. Actually, Ivern was pretty complicated. I worked on Ivern. Um. And he had a lot of complicated stuff. Orn, I worked on Orn, um, and we made his like his alt. That was pretty, pretty complicated. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I probably one of those two things. I guess I don't know if I'm answering like really what they're asking, but um, I mean, I've had some some champions that have been really like hard to kind of get figured out, and um, you know, get like the, all the final touches put together and stuff like that. In terms of like. You know, just from from idea to out the door. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think probably in terms of just sheer complication, it'd probably be like Orn with his alt, maybe. I 
I mean, the the stuff for Legends of Runeterra isn't as bad because um, we get to like make a character and and then we make an illustration for them. It's very different when you're working on uh, a champion and that character has to like run around and have abilities and um, you know move and cast spells and I don't know all that stuff. Man, it gets kind of more complicated. Right, I think I want to like change the shape of this a little bit. This perspective is bugging me. Maybe is that right? I don't know, man. I think this is. I think we've got. We've got. This is going to be jank. I don't know. I just think it's going <laughs> to going to trouble us for a while. The perspective on it. And again, you guys, like, in, in terms of, like, overall values, I'm trying to kind of just build, like, a nice rounded sense. So, you know, it's, like, just lighter up here. Getting, like, you know, core shadow dark right there, but also just kind of, like, general. Or I guess uh, ambient inclusion, I should say, here. And then just sort of darker core shadow here. Try to make him just feel ball-like. And then as we just go, it just becomes one of those things of, like... And even when I'm working, like, for a character in lore... Um, it's just how much time you have, you know, and you can kind of render until until you run out of time, basically, to try to make it look as good as possible and read as well as possible. See, that's too dark. That's too dark. All right. Anyway. We have another question for you, Chris. Jay, she asked, uh, how do you come up with different ideas for a concept instead of repeating the same idea over and over again? Yeah, um, well, it's it, it's it's interesting. Like, that's it's always a danger, you know? Even if you're, like, used to concepting a lot of different stuff, like, we always have our kind of... Um, our, our, our things that we return to, um, like our, our tropes and our archetypes that we kind of go back to. Um, so, like, you do have to sort of watch yourself in terms of like the types of stuff you you know if you always like to draw like um monsters or whatever um but in all honesty like uh, the main thing is to stay interested in um the world around you and in the other other IPs and um you know just always be looking at like you know different archetypes and different takes on type like character types and just sort of like try to ingest as much inspiration as possible and it's not it's not meant to like one to one steal it from other IPs by any means like that's actually the you know the opposite of what you want to do but you can learn things about like the decisions that people made when they tried to um solve certain design issues that can inspire you know a new take from yourself so um i think i think it's just truly it, it's like just stay interested you know always be like checking out what what else is going on and um and try to always be looking to see what uh what clever ways have crept up to to solve design issues. Hope that gave a decent answer. Oop, is my is my iPad not showing up, you guys? Yeah, I was checking on that one. Oh no, what's going on? Let me see. Let me see, you guys. I might have to. Uh... Yeah, I can take this time to ask you one question, okay. if you can, or oh, I can remind the chat about the details of the contest. Real quick, is it back now, you guys? Do you see me making a mark? Yep. Okay. No questions, right. no info. <laughs> back to streaming. All right, works now. Cool. All right, guys. Yes, just bear with me if we have any hiccups. I'll... Actually, you know what? There's one question that is really related to the previous one, actually, from my take. Uh, how come some okay. of... Uh, champion artwork in Legends of Runeterra seems uh, seems to look different in a lot of ways compared to champion art in LOL, League of Legends. Yeah, um, well, you know, Rune, Legends of Runeterra is a slightly like we we are developing. It's all it's like it, that canon universe, you know. Um, but when you make a character for League of Legends, there's certain constraints in terms of like how detailed you can get. Uh, these guys are small, you know, they're the size of a quarter or whatever on your screen. So they design them differently. They design them with an eye toward like bigger details, bigger silhouette shapes. And even from like this, you know, our game is top down. So they design for all that. So when we get a chance to take a champion and pull him into 
um, lore, we we will sometimes uh, kind of re-explore them and try to keep all the same tenets of what they are and not change them in any major way. But like to go in and try to add like maybe an extra level of detail um, to to do some stuff and and give them some some visual texture and some visual depth that because of league's constraints, like they didn't get a chance to do. Um, so, so if, if I hope that answers your question, but that's, that's actually what happens. And we'll, we'll talk about that kind of stuff sometimes as, as we're working on, um, a champ or whatever, it's just like, you know, if it's an older champ or, um, just if it's a champ that, that doesn't have like a lot of detail to them or something, like maybe there's some stuff we can do to make them feel a little bit more a part of the world. Like, uh, an example might be like Quinn, you know, we kind of try to make her feel mm -hmm. a little bit more like a ranger. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a little bit more like with the like leathers and and um, uh, things like textures and 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 stuff that felt a little bit more organic for somebody that was out like in the in the forests and, and of of or of uh, Damasia. So th that's that's really what we're trying to do, honestly. Um, it's not it's it's to maintain like the spirit of the champ by all means, but see if we can't flesh them out a touch more um, when we can. I hope that I hope that gives you. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, there, there is also a question from Necrit. What comes first, lore-wise, an artist idea or a writer idea? Which is a beautiful question. Um, actually, uh, so there's different. I, I think the best way to explain it is there's there's different parts of an idea. Can um, you give an example for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me. I'll. I'll, I'll um. Funny you should ask. Uh, yes, we. So so let's 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 take it from like kind of the beginning of an idea, right? Is um, I talked about the beginning where design. We're gonna flatten this, you guys, so I can kind of start doing some stuff. Um, design will come up with their needs, right? Like, okay, we want to go to to this champion or to this region, and we're gonna do a certain champion, um, and we want it to feel aggressive. You know, like I brought up. Uh, I brought up Damasia, right? Like with Garen. Like he's a valiant knight kind of archetype, meaning like that type of character that you would recognize. It's like, oh yeah, this guy's probably a good guy. He's a knight. He fights. He's probably like melee. He's got a big sword. Um, and they might be like, okay, well, we want this group that goes along with him. We want them to also feel like fighters. You know, we want them to feel um, maybe not necessarily like the tankiest or whatever, but we want them to feel armored like he is and all that. So design will come up with a number of like gameplay uh constraints that are like this is how this thing has to come across to be successful and um and so then they'll they'll give those kinds of things to to the writers and well to to the concept artists and the writers um and once we take that then we start to brainstorm based off of our like kind of visual experience and stuff like okay well how can we execute on on characters that have that the right design element feel to them but are interesting maybe aren't aren't too cookie cutter or maybe you're something that like would would feel right for the world of Runeterra and but like maybe we haven't seen like 100% the same thing before or whatever um so we kind of like the and a lot of this ends up being you know the concept artist will take it and we'll develop mood boards about like what the character like the subgroup could be um and, and we'll work with the writers and the writers will kind of like um they'll pitch in ideas and stuff but they'll also kind of be there to help us like edit and 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 kind of condense our ideas down because you know it's like concept artists a room full of concept artists it's just like popcorn like ideas are like oh it could be this could be that could be this um so then we'll we'll go through that process and and kind of share it around share it with each other share like what ideas we have um take them back to design and kind of get their two cents on it and uh in the end then we'll 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 get to a point where we have um you know uh basically like an agreed upon like okay this subgroup it would make sense to explore, uh, like bring it up, gang, gangplank again, like the jagged hooks, his crew. I think they pulled that from from his lore, L O R E. Um, and uh, but they were like, this would be a great crew, like of these like really rough, aggressive pirates that could go along with gangplank, you know. Um, so once you've sort of agreed upon, like that's what this group is going to be, or what we think this group is going to be, then that that's that's where as concept artists you go in and you start sketching you start making lineups you know you make guys of different shapes and sizes and feels and what kind of weapons would these guys have and you know if they're if they're from bilgewater they're not going to have like demacian swords and armor 
um you know like what kind of they're gonna be like piratey i suppose but if they're gonna be piratey how can we make them like a little more fantasy and not like straight up pirate stuff um so you know you start looking into like you know scale like scale armor and and types of weapons and cool tattoos that could be you know uniquely uh from bilgewater that kind of thing so um anyway does that make sense you know and then and then basically from there uh when we start sharing them uh, we get to a point where design comes back and they start to have like finished ideas as to what what like characters they need like if we need five or six uh characters for a subgroup eventually they come back and they're like okay cool we need a guy who's this size meaning like you know this much power this much hit, this many hit points um so he's this size so he's got to look big or she's got to look big uh they do this thing or they have this buff like think like this buff for their like you know fellow subgroup members etc and you, you you compute that in with the things that you've been sketching and you try to see where they match and what tweaks need to be made like maybe if they like heal their buddies it's like some sort of crazy um like pirate ship medic or something that would have like you know weird elixirs and stuff all over them to help heal their their uh their fellow mm-hmm. jagged hooks members stuff like that um so anyway like that's that's pretty much kind of the gist of how how it goes down um anyway i hope that answers the question yep that does and we have tb sky and asking when composing card art what's the process of figuring out a composition that works both on the full card full card art and the tiny little window the card will ah. out to it. tricky question yeah no man it's a good question dude that's a very yeah. savvy question i think uh actually my um my art director at least he was watching the stream earlier um this is like this is his like this is his world man this is his bane not his bane but it's like the constant challenge um it's actually not his bane at all it's 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 straight we actually really enjoy when we see uh, uh an illustration come in and we're like oh that's gonna be a really awesome crop we call it um so yeah uh it is a thing um and it's a part of all of our conversations as we're like reviewing um uh reviewing illustrations as they come in and and it needs to be uh something that's accounted for there are a lot of ways to solve for it though um and sometimes you get cool like kind of ideas where you know the composition is really different and you're like oh, i don't know how that's going to work um it's not like a classic thing we would come up with for a card crop but then you like figure out something really interesting and get like a unique card crop out of it um so there are a lot of ways to solve it but yeah man that's that is that is a real question that's a smart question it's a very video game developer savvy question all right this guy's a little chunky right now i'm gonna have to work on unify this boy but we'll get him there all right how's everybody doing is anybody else drawing their dude right now yeah it's it's it would be nice to know if you're drawing Chunk. <laughs> yeah. Chunks ahoy. Not in love with this little horn yet. All right. All right, so now I'm going to kind of give myself a little visual, little visual candy. And we're going to go in and, and do a new layer and maybe drop a little glow on this homeboy. He's not ready yet. What's our percentage-wise progress? Percentage here? Yeah. Uh, it just depends on on render-wise. Like, I could probably, like, finish out the details and be done, like, you know, in another, I don't know, you could call it, you could, you could call it, like, 75%, but depending on how far you want to push it, you could also call it, like, 60% or so. <laughs> um so yeah i don't know that's kind of see sometimes though you'll make a big leap forward it's just it's all these little hair bits man and this is this is kind of just like part of my world is is rendering out taking care of the small shapes rendering out these little nicks and stuff um and like like i've said there's there's a lot of ways to make characters and make art and there's a lot of smarter ways to go about doing these things but this is just kind of so just kind of my zone, you know, it's like tending a little visual garden. 
We just bounce around and like clip a weed here. Find a new little growth or something over there. God, growth is probably not a great word, but. Ah, uh, yeah. He's coming along. He's coming along. We're going to have to unify some of this. But what do we have? We have another hour and 20 minutes if we need it. Well, we have We're, time. We have time. If everybody's. Everyone is happy, fatigued. so. <laughs> Uh, stop it. There we go. All right, let's I, see. Here. I have another question for you. Uh, AC Base asks, uh, what are some examples of how you interpret game mechanics into design elements? Ooh, yeah. Um, I love the questions, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really tons good. of good questions. Um, okay, let me think. i try to think of a card maybe from this set. Um, well, like, uh, Thorny Toad was one. Um, that guy had a little kind of, um, gosh, do, do you guys remember what's, what's, when the he dies? Yeah, he, um, uh, tosses cards and heals your nexus. That's right. That's right. And, yeah. um, and he's just really annoying to deal with because, because of his, like, his, his, uh, four hit points, you know, like, yeah. Um, so anyway, he was just a, a, a card that they were like, this guy's going to be kind of annoying. He's going to have like a, um, like he, he, when you see him, like you're, it's going to be annoying to have to deal with. Actually, though, I, I feel like a lot of people figured out how to get around him. Like they just don't interact with him because <laughs> he's only one damage. And so he'll just sit on your board for like four rounds. Um, but uh, the intent being that he would be this like kind of cantankerous thing. Like you wouldn't want to deal with him. So, um, so that's an example, though, where the feel of this is going to be annoying. So when the designers saw this, like, grouchy, like, tree root toad thing that just looked annoying and angry, they were like, yes, yes, that's the feel. That's what we want. Um, so that's kind of an example of, like, where the, the it's, it was a conversation around, like, the feel of it. Um, but you can also have stuff where, like... Uh, well, like um, Ember, I think it's Ember Maiden. You know, she she has um, every round start. You know, she does one damage to everything. So that's kind of an example where having her be like on fire and or having her have like, like fire stick and she's burned this village down uh, behind her that she's walking out of or whatever. Like that that was one of those things that came together uh, because like you know Winter's Claw, they're they're sort of pillaging and and um, terrorizing you know, villages to a certain degree, or at least, you know, surviving by um, fighting and, and, and taking on, taking down other villages, things like that. Um, so having her be this character that, that carried this fire thing and seemed like, like kind of just punky, like didn't care, burning it down, whatever. Um, that was a, a good example of like how we visually went about making a character that felt right for the, for the gameplay that she was going to put, like she was going to put burn damage on everything. You know, um, I was going to ask about the hairstyle. By the way, why why she why is she punk or such a cool hairstyle? What 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 it has to do with the design? But you just explained it. It's so beautiful that even the hairstyles have like characteristics in the card game mechanics and design itself. Yeah, yeah, and that was actually um, that was in a a concept originally done by. Uh, um, SMV, which is like sometimes they do they, they they did a lot of work actually for like set one. Um, they also do illustrations, um, and that was one of those interesting cases where she just had a great attitude. She was a really cool character, and when design came to us and was like, we need somebody that's going to do the things that she's going to do, and like fire and stuff came up, we we just sort of tweaked her a little bit, and like um, I think she might have always had a pretty cool punk haircut because she just had a cool vibe. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> um, I love that. Yeah, haircut. man. She, yeah, she's a cool character. She's also a good card. Like, it's it's it proves its worth. Another yeah. question is is like how many times in average you changing concept of a character during developments? An example of characters has Crispin has been working on. Um. Yeah. I mean, well, they change over time. Like. You know, so so in our process, we kind of talk to design 
and try to get a nice idea, enough of an idea of what a group of characters is going to do to start making like a lineup, like basically start sketching and developing some, some characters um, that will go together and that will match like kind of the theme and the, the vibe of the champion they're attached to and those kinds of things. Um, so from that point, like they can change, a, like they can change a lot, but you know, we try to kind of land in a general safe zone where like the characters we're making are like, if they're supposed to be aggressive, they feel aggressive. If they're, if they're supposed to be like really ma like heavy magic users and stuff, they feel like heavy magic users. Um, so then like, as we go, we're making less and less adjustments based off of like the design needs, because, you know, we've been sort of talking with design and keeping their, their developing kind of desires for the gameplay side, like in mind as we go, sometimes you have to come up with something totally new, like design will come in and, We'll be like kind of getting things put together and um, getting close to kind of the end of a process for the set and design will be like, all right, so, you know, through testing, we realized we needed like, you know, a character can, that can do X, Y, Z thing. Um, and and they, they might come back and then we're like, okay, well, we don't actually have that. So let's, let's take the rules that we've built kind of visually for the rest of that, um, that subgroup and let's, let's make something new. Uh, but a lot of times we stay pretty close, you know, it's, it's part of the process to kind of keep checked in and make sure we're like, we're not off designing stuff that like visually designing stuff. That's not going to work very well. So and sometimes a lot, sometimes not. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. That's it. <laughs> when you pause, I'm, I'm just like, is he thinking or is he like, <laughs> I can't see uh, him. Yeah, sorry. No. Um, well, my, I'm going to repeat myself a lot. I know. If you're Good. watching this from the start, uh, I apologize for that. But it's nice to remember that this unit is not going to go in the game. It's mm, it's for the purpose of this art stream and it's inspired by Legends of Runeterra uh, universe. So, yeah, Aww. I think it's important to give this information as well. All right, guys. So here's what I'm going to do. So I've started that this is the oh. glow layer, the fancy glow layer. And I went and I just grabbed this like lum this light brush. This is my little cheat, my little glow cheat. So you give him a little, yeah, little glowy eyes. Yeah. Now, now he's magic. That's how you do magic, everybody. You just make their eyes glow straight up. Boom. Now you're like, oh, wow, that guy's super magical. How do you do that? We'll get back to that. <laughs> We're going to add some more. But I wanted to, I wanted to give him some pop. Oh, I need to get some magic. Man. man, there's so much more I would do. Oh, I hope we don't. Hope we don't run out of time to do some cool stuff. Oh, still got my light brush on. Oops. Nobody caught me on that. Nobody stopped me. Thanks, guys. All right. There is a. Really beautiful question from Prism Lux. Have you ever created a character or setting that you liked so much that you or your co-workers wanted to go deeper into their lore and story? Please say oh, yes. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, most we definitely. Want to, we want to hear this story. Um, hmm. Well, there's lots of them. I mean, I'll tell you what. Like, I love, and this is why it's fun kind of working on this guy. I love the Earth sign. The group that sort of are um, that that hasn't been explored deeply. Um, there's the the story that we did that um, I don't I don't actually I can't remember. Silence of the Damned. Yeah, I don't know if that's officially canon anymore, but I know that the Earth signs still are a thing for sure. Um, anyway, I love it. Like I just love that. Like these these sort of really like maybe like scary, you know, bear shaman gods of the frail yord like that's rad i don't know i was i could i could my thing is like you give me like viking shaman stuff and i'm all over it i'm in it let's go play like um so that that's one but like a lot of champs there's there's little elements of them that would have been really 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 fun to to maybe try to bring out more but it's just especially on champ team you have to sort of like leave stuff on the cutting room floor um because there's only you know there's only so much space in terms of getting getting things across, you know, like a champion has to has to be about the gameplay and and, and as much lore as we can get. But 
Um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, the Earth sign is definitely one. Um, but it's cool, you know? You guys, like, that's what's rad about working on, on Lore. I literally used to work on Champ Team, and so I've come over to this team with all of these... Uh, <laughs> if, if I weren't streaming, how long would it take me to draw chunks? Uh, we're almost two hours in. I could probably be where I'm at now in like an hour and maybe about half hour less, something like that. Hey, if I get chunks done while I'm talking in three hours, I'm impressed. That's just me. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, do you have formalized color palettes for each region? Like, is there an, an official like Noxus red, for example, or a Freljord blue, or a magic blue <laughs> that like you use? Yeah, we actually like. I I don't know. We might have canonized some of that somewhere. Um, we definitely like. There's a definite, at the very least, informal knowledge of like you know that blue green Shadow Isles magic is something that like. You know, when you see it, you know it. Um, and then we talk about that, like, you know, e even when we're doing, you know, reviewing illustrations and, and looking at characters and even working on characters ourselves, we're like, you know, th the words have been said many, many times over that that Shadow Isles, like, green has slipped into, like, Zon green, and we need to, like, go back and cool it down. Um, so there, there actually might be some documentation that, like, has, like, solidified a official noxian red um but like it's like like we know to use it <laughs> you know um it's definitely something we need to that we're aware of and that i don't know there, there's probably a document somewhere and again like right now my my art director is like he was happy earlier and now he's sad because he's like no we totally have that <laughs> so what what kind of brushes do you use during uh this kind of process crease art uh so I, I just the I only use two or three. Sometimes depending on it, like what I'm doing, I, I will branch out and I use some of the like more painterly brushes for certain effects. But I literally like for the most part right now I'm using technical pen. Um, it just it's you know it, it's it's got some pressure sensitivity and it just it lets me r render you know in a way that's it's it's intensive like maybe it's labor intensive but it also like I speed it up because I'm not having to think about it you know. Like I can, I can create and finish characters like pretty quickly, like a fairly complex character in maybe like a couple days. Um, so like this is my main one, but you know I use that uh, like I think it's Gasicki Ink or Gasinski Ink. I use this one a lot when I'm like just kind of dropping in a little, um, you know that like backdrop or whatever that I was talking about. Like, um, what's the word? Anyway, when I was dropping in my like baseline color, so I use I use that one for that. Actually, I use I use uh, gouache a lot to kind of blend. Like if I'm kind of getting to a point where I'm like, okay, I need to make some like bigger things happen. Like I might take a little like gouache action, not get it too big because it's like pretty. Op like I can kind of get some areas to merge together a little bit, group values, those kinds of things like this. Like maybe I'm actually gonna I was doing it to demonstrate. Maybe I'm gonna keep it. Maybe. Yes, I'm going to keep it. So you guys see like that kind of thing. I can even you know, maybe go in on top here. And it just lets me kind of like group group the values a little bit, a little bit more. I think maybe homeboys brow needs a little needs a little more dark in there. Yeah, see? Bam, look at that. Thanks, guys. All right, let's see. So that's... You can see kind of like just... Like that, right? So that that just grouped a bunch of values. I had all these like little fur shapes, and they kind of were pretty busy. So that's a way to kind of knock down the busyness. Get a little, little gradient. We're going to add that, everybody. We're going to keep that. That's a keeper. Oh, I did it again. Back to technical pen. Anyway, I, I'm I'm a simple dude, man. I, I gotta. You give me a couple of tools that like work, and I'm pretty happy. Let's put a little glint on this. Let's go up. Yeah. Warm that up. 
There's an interesting question from Wandakun. Uh, Wandakun asks, do you guys design the tattoos uh, like Brahm or Wally based on something? Like, do they have meanings? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, actually, like, we'd have to ask. Um, I think Justin Alberts was the concept artist. He's an awesome dude, great concept artist on Volibear. Um, sometimes... I mean, we always try to base it off of a shape language, you know, like the Freljord actually has kind of a developed shape language. Mm -hmm. It's sort of Celtic, not Norse-ish, but then it's a little more jagged, a little chunkier. Um, so like in that sense, like we definitely base them off of things that we've developed over time from that region. Um, and I'm looking at like Volibear's little like runes right now. And um, I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, uh, Albert sat down and didn't at least come up with a story behind the runes he used. Um, you know, I, that, that's kind of what I try to do. But then sometimes, you you know, you, you want to make something that's aesthetically pleasing. And, and then you go to your writer and you're like, these these runes are dope. I'm going to put them on there. Like, maybe you can figure out what they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it happens both ways, though. You know, sometimes it's part of a story and other times it's it's it comes from, you know, a design choice that needs to feel organic to a region. And then you, you solve it later. Do you also draw on paper? And if yes, oh, yeah. what's your art supplies for that? Manga paper, mechanical pencil, and stuff like that? Um, yeah, so I draw a lot. And I actually use moleskin notebooks. Like, that's kind of my thing. I got a bunch of those. Um, I just like the I like the tooth of the paper. You know, it feels... It's got some weight to it, but it's not too heavy. It's not... Or not too, um, too chunky and not too light. Um, and then I actually use a lot... Do a lot of pencil rendering, and I use, like, Blackwing... Blackwing Palomino, or is it Palomino Blackwing? Yeah, anyway, pencils, you can look up. If you type up Blackwing Palomino pencils, uh, they're nice, they're smooth, they smooth, man. Um, uh, I, I use those two things, like, for the most part, and I, I've used mechanical pencils. Sometimes I just sharpen, um, you know, like a regular kind of drawing pencil um, to do, like, actual, like, little line, line art bits and stuff. Um, but that's that's kind of the primary, primary things. I, I I love working in pencil. There's there's times when I could probably like just work in pencil all the time and be happy. But then I see all this dope digital color art, and I'm like, oh, I want to do that too. <laughs> Larotesca asks, do you find it easier to figure out values with grayscale, or would you rather working directly with color? Do you think there oh. are specific situations to use each? Uh, grayscale for show um, is much easier. Um, color is there's a lot of decisions to make with color, like about you know the temperature of the color and um, you know just I don't know, man, all kinds of stuff that goes into deciding on the right color. Um, so I I definitely prefer to figure out like if I if if grayscale or if the values. Is like especially like a major part of like a moody piece or something. It's like nice to get that done in in grayscale. Um, but I've actually found, and this is one thing that, that has helped me, is like that's part of the exercise of toning like my my sort of canvas, so to speak, and the character is like I'm I, I've gotten rid of a lot of decision making by saying I'm building off of this like kind of muted purple lavender color. So it kind of lets me do a little bit of a like grayscale thought process because I'm, I'm, I've basically made my sort of little mini world, like a cool purple color. And I'm trying to build values kind of off of, off of that, if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, it's like, if, if I go into like a full color range, that's hard, man. So I don't know. Yeah. I've, I've learned a lot about how to do it in color, but it definitely is like, it, it's an added element that can be tricksy. I hope you guys are still enjoying. Not too bored. This dude uh, rendering feet. <laughs> Not me, actually. <laughs> mm. It's it's so chilling. Maybe it's because of the time in Istanbul. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Sorry, it's man. You guys your, your your Friday night with. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. This this Look. is the best Friday night. <laughs> for a time like this, like how how did uh, coronavirus affect your work and your 
daily routine? Yeah. Well, I mean, I actually, um, I live kind of far from uh, the campus, like the Riot Games campus. So mm -hmm. I'd always worked a couple days a week from home. And I'm pretty fortunate because it's concept art. Like we have meetings and stuff that we need to jump into and be a part of. But um, a lot of my work is done like what I'm doing right now, you know, and um, just being in my head and being at the page and solving stuff. So I've been really fortunate, really fortunate personally about being able to kind of jump into a work from home full time kind of situation. Um, and, and, and being able to kind of like maintain, you know, a, a level of productivity. I mean, with kids being around and stuff, it's it, you don't get quite as much done, but um, it's been it's been OK. You know, I'm, I'm I count myself very fortunate. Well, I have to ask if you need any more breaks as well if, while we're going forward. Um, no, my iPad might ask for a break here in a minute. And if it does, I'll let you guys know. But um, uh, I will probably just keep jamming for as long as I can, because now I really want to try to get this as much done as possible. Okay. I've left, I've left behind all pretense of like bathroom breaks and stuff, my man. I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to get it done. <laughs> If you had the possibility to live in one of the Runeterra regions, which one would it be and why? Ooh. And also which type of character do you think, <laughs> which type of character you think you would be like to be? You would like to okay be. yeah well can i ask this for for yeah. the chat at first yeah. what's your what's the region that you want to live chat then we can answer <laughs> all right so there's 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 a couple answers to that um if i were like legit like like seriously guys seriously if i'm gonna go live anywhere like piltover zon is probably where you want to go because like they've got the closest thing to like modern amenities like let's be real but If I were going to go to like where my fantasy heart is, oh, I'd be the Freljord, man. I wouldn't want to live there, though. That'd be so cold. But if you could go up to the Freljord and talk about what kind of character you could be, if you could go up to the Freljord and be some sort of like crazy, awesome, like giant, shamanistic, badass, like, yeah, I mean, let's do like, that sounds awesome. Like that, that's my like ideal, like what I would want to go do. But like that, that would be hard, you guys. Like that's the Freljord's cold. Uh, they probably don't have enough food. Um, so anyway, so that, that's a couple answers. Like I, I've seen Ionia pop up. I'm with you. Actually, Ionia would be really cool too. Like, I mean, I, I bet like, you know, drinking some, some Ionia alcoholic beverage out on one of those like beautifully designed porches, looking out in a magical forest and like, you know, just hanging, man. Like I could, I could do that. I could do that for sure. I like their attitude. I like Ionia's attitude. Like they got, for the most part, they're like into mysticism and nature and stuff. So every every time you ask me a question, I've got eight answers for it. Just you know, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, actually, I'm lo I love listening to you, and I think people prefer you talking rather than me. So, uh, desire the name. Uh, Can you suggest any book, any good book for materials rendering? Good book for materials rendering. Wow. Um, I don't know, man. I'm not the best one to ask for that. Like, I, I think, you know, what I would probably say is like, go. I think Alex Flores has an art station. <laughs> go find that dude's art station and look at how he does like medals and stuff. It's so juicy and amazing. Um, but in all honesty, I guarantee there are some really dope. Uh, references and places to go but um my like my chat my conversations with our splash artists are like coming you know bubbling up in my brain and and it's like the best thing is probably to go get like real reference where you can find it you know and then try to like try your best to recreate that um and then once you like have done that a bunch then you can start to make like stylized choices with your with your renders um that that's probably what those dudes would would tell you dudes and dudettes sorry i don't have a really like awesome i think one. you will have a really awesome answer for the next question because it's my favorite one the mm -hmm. 
Andy Bosho asks, why don't why don't any of the Freljord characters wear shirts? Right? Yeah, it's cold, man. Um uh yeah, I don't know, you guys. Like, I mean, okay, so we've we've we we talk about this kind of stuff too. Um so in part, it it is, you know, probably because they're so they're so terribly badass that they don't even need them in that cold environment. Um but also it's like, you know, I think it's kind of the it's kind of the catch of when you're designing stuff for games and, and movies and stuff like uh, in in all times. It's like you're always looking for ways to make characters unique. And if you cover everybody in like layers and layers of fur, they don't look like anything. They just look like fur. Um, so I think it I think it comes kind of from a desire to find something like aspirational and unique, but yeah it's tough because these guys actually would be in a cold environment so then we end up kind of having to also come up with like cool reasons like why you know like um like ash has uh what she she's got the 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 thing where she can like you know hold true ice and so she's kind of magically a part of the frail yard because i mean you know like that girl is not dressed enough for being out in that cold but um but because like of her her magical elements and her magical kind of ties, I suppose she she can get away with it, um, you know. And and in some cases too, it's like you kind of you imagine if somebody was fighting, like maybe they would strip off those layers of furs and and, and get hyped up. Like I mean, there is historical, you know, like the 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 way that you know a lot of Europeans back like that like thousands of years ago, like European tribes and stuff. Um, even though it was cold, like they would strip down and paint themselves and, and go to war, you know, to show how intensely tough they are and to intimidate their their opponent stuff like that so i mean some of it comes from that too where it's like we kind of borrow from those kinds of things um but like i see you though on that question for sure yeah hunogetsu has an answer to that like they have they are nordic they have 20 percent cold resistance you know that's right yeah, that's right correct um <laughs> uh, sempi turtle 17 asks, where can we find your portfolio? Uh, if you guys, I think like, if you guys want to see a bunch of my stuff like in one place, like I do have an art station. Um, and I think it's just my name, Chris Campbell. And I think somewhere on the page it says Skizix. And you'll recognize like there's some lore stuff and all that. Um, but I do like add, I think it's underscore Skizix. I post stuff to like Instagram and and Twitter, I, I don't get to do as much personal work just because, like, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of stuff here for um, for lore. But, you know, I do try to post, like, you know, like, lore stuff and pa in the past league stuff when I when I had it. And then I do kind of throw out personal drawings and stuff, too. Mud Kipping Mud Kipper. That's a beautiful nickname. <laughs> What is the inspiration behind the concept of Noxus clothing and aesthetics wise? Like Noxus. Piltover and Zone is based on steampunk, Freljord is based on Nordic and so on. Yeah. I think so that, that gets in that gets in actually like that's before my time, you know. Um in terms of when the Katarinas and Dar uh, Darius and Draven and, and those guys kind of came came together and I, and I think like so I, I don't have the actual answer. Like it, it's a little bit of like precedes me. Um, if I would have to guess, it, it was you know we had Demacia with their sort of shining armor knight, and and they were blue and cool, cool steel and and gold. And so um, I'm sure Noxus felt like a good foil. You know, it was with the um, with the dark like gunmetal gray and and the red and um, it just it I, I would imagine it just visually probably worked but um you know i i do know that like these days you know we we're not trying to make any one region like one note and we don't want noxus to just be like the bad guys like they they have a society they have things that they are um that they want to do like from a societal level and take care of of their um you know i don't know families and and people. all that stuff so yeah like they're people right they're, they're freaking people so um so i i think it came from just the visual need but like, there's a lot of stuff, too. Like, you guys, like, League came out a long time ago, and when it first came out, we were cranking out characters, and um, and it was a super fun game that it was, like, really interesting. Like, how do all these characters fit together? Um, and now, like, we actually have what 
what I think is a really fun task, which is where we're trying to infuse these these regions and these characters with like enough depth that they become interesting beyond just just the games that they exist in. And and, and it's awesome because I think players love them and want that and they ask for that. And um anyway, so I, I just think like it's it's kind of an interesting interesting thing, you know. Like we we care very deeply about making sure that our world is like we've accounted for the things, the decisions we've made in the past from a design and visual standpoint. We we don't we care very deeply not to just leave something hanging and and act like you know oh well it's fine we're just going to change it if you want to change it. Um, like we we put in a lot of thought, you know. There's a lot of like meetings and sketches and hey, this could mean that and this could mean that, even though like we made that decision, say, in like 2014. But it's kind of awesome because like, what if it's this? And like, oh, and then like you'll get like the jagged hooks, you know, like this group of really interesting, unique characters will be developed out of a line of text from a story, you know, and um, it's a really fun task, actually. It's it, it's it, it can be tricky because there's a lot of um, sort of balls in the air and, and, and teams that you know, you don't you don't want to mess anything up for like you know another team or whatever, but um, but it's it's really it's really pretty fun, you guys. We we want it all to kind of like somehow come around and make make good sense, and and it it it's led us to a world that actually is like I, I don't you know you don't you don't I don't know, man. I don't know what what all is going to happen in Rune Terra before it's all said and done, and how how different like factions and and characters might someday meet and all that stuff. Like it, it's super cool to to watch happen and. And kind of fantasize about and on lore i get to kind of make some of that stuff happen like me and my team do we're like hey like you know you guys mentioned jagged hooks in this story we think we can make a we think we can make a, a group out of this like and everybody's like dope do it <laughs> uh lorfi asks do you have an do you have an easy time rotating 3d shapes in your head or is visualize visualizing stuff before you draw it do you do any uh, visualization exercises? I'm sorry, I couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that, Batu? Yeah. Um, no, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Yeah. I got you. Um, <laughs> sure. uh, no. Um, some stuff is easier than others. Uh, it, it it is just experience. Like I've hit my head against a lot of shapes a lot of times, and so I've figured out little ways that when I start to work, like how to how to bring those out. And even then, I've just also like. You know, there's little tricks to like fix it later, <laughs> you know, kind of stuff, which you want to try to get like really good at um, the core, like sort of tenets of drawing and all that. But, um, you know, like everybody's got things that kind of trip them up, you know, and some shapes are like, oh, yeah, I get how to draw that. And other ones, I'm like, oh, OK, I got to draw this like thing and um, it's going to take me some time to get it right. Or I might even have to ask one of the other guys to like help me like solve how this works in space or whatever. Um so it's like I'm yeah I mean I it's it's a it's it's a good question I, I think the answer is always for that kind of stuff like just experience you know just practicing um and the more you draw the better you'll get because you'll just have seen it before you'll you'll have have hit your head against it you know oh no Marshall's crack says I'm boring is this boring I don't think so. <laughs> not everyone can en enjoy it, but I. It's okay. No, I'm not trying to bust yeah, it out. Like, you know, it's, it's uh, all right. Like when when I read the chat, everyone is having fun. Everyone has questions. Which one of them is? John Singer asks: Is is the most of the concept team drawing everything, or do you guys also use three D? Um, we draw for the most part. Yeah, we we draw for the most part. Like now, um, again, like. My team focuses on characters. Uh, so, you know, if you were going to do more environment stuff, you might get a lot more into like 3D, um, like doing some 3D stuff to kind of like get your perspective down and to understand your shapes in space and those kinds of things more. But for the most part, like we, we just draw. We just chilling and drawing, man. Uh, Pixelated Fairs asks, uh, are you self-taught or did you go to art school? And you said that you studied English, right? So I did go to art school. Um, mm -hmm. I, I went to, I went to Rego school and got a degree in English in my early twenties. And then, um, I actually, and like, I'm not, you know, this is, this is one of the stories that always ends up coming out, but 
uh, my father passed away in my late twenties, and it sent me into a like, like I, I started seeking like happiness, man. I don't know, just like what, what could I do? I I, I was trying to be a writer, and it, it was one of those things where, like I said, it was always like kind of a grind to do, but it was creative, so I liked it. And I think I left art a little bit because I just never had anybody there that was like encouraging me, even though I loved to do it as a kid. Um, so I, I think it was kind of one of those things where like, I remember having a conversation with my wife like about a year after my dad died. And I was like, you know what, you know what would make me happy like today, like right now, not like some future point where you imagine yourself to be a famous writer or something like that, or like, you know, you've got it made and, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, whatever it is, whatever makes you happy or your fantasy is. But I was just like, I could draw. <laughs> like if I could just draw for a living and I didn't know I was going to be able to get to like a riot type place, you know, I just, I was like, I, I think like, like that's again, like I was saying before, that's the one time when like time passed differently. I, I just, I lost myself in it and, and I want to get that back. I think that's how I could be happy. Whatever the results are, if I'm just doing it. Um, and like that, 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 that decided it, you know, and I, we actually had a pretty decent art school, uh, in, in my, where I grew up called, um, uh, in Columbus, Ohio called CCAD. And, uh, and my wife and I were in the car driving back from like a friend's house and we were talking about it. And I was just like, can I go to art school? <laughs> and like, we talked to it. <laughs> she was basically like, yeah, babe, let's, let's try, you know? And, um, and then, and then all kinds of like craziness happens and, you end up working at Riot Games, dude. That's that's where you follow your passion. I think pa passion takes over decisions. Passion takes over. I think the yeah. time that that time flies when you're doing something with your passion. That's right. Yeah, totally, man. So, uh, man, that's, I don't even remember the question. That's my yeah, long end. But yeah, thank you for the nice speech. Like, I I got inspired. I don't know you guys yet, but I got inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Aha. See now you guys are falling for it. Now you guys all gotta go do your passion. Sorry. Go be go be happy, guys. Go be happy. Well, I'm lucky that my passion is talking to you right now. So we Oof, I feel bad for other... you. <laughs> Well, why not? Like your passion's talking to me. It's... Talking to any player, uh, like I, I, I know, love I know, I got players. You. I got you, I got you. Okay, so Let's jump to the next question. As Ploid asks, how are the other artists on your team being able to work with your personal strengths and weaknesses as an artist? Is it better Ooh. to be specialized in a field, asset character, environment, etc., or be more universal in your skill set? That that's a beautiful question. Yeah, um, you know, and the answer to that is is again like there's multi there's multiple facets to it. Some of it depends on like what do you want to do, you know, like if. If you are really good at a lot of stuff, then you could probably be very useful, maybe at like a smaller studio where you can come in and you can really help them, excuse me, achieve a lot of different things. Like you, you can, you can help them, you know, it, first of all, let me say it's always, if you're good at multiple things, it's always good. It's never a bad thing. Um, but if you want to like, say, come to Riot and work on characters, like you're, you're, your focus is probably going to need to be far and ahead like characters. Um, but yeah, Ohio represent, I see you where, where we chick peas and rice. I got you, man. Or, or lady. <laughs> Excellent human being. Um, but, uh, yeah. So I, I think like it, it, it really, it truly does depend. Um, you know, cause there is also that whole thing, right. Of like, if you're, you know, Jack of all trades, like, uh, the, like master of none kind of thing. Like it doesn't, if you, if you're really, really, really good at characters or at environments, like that's awesome, you know, and you can probably get a job, especially at like a, a larger studio that's going to want you to come in and focus on that area, uh, for a team. Um, but you know, if you're, if you're like very, very good at like a number of things and you want to go somewhere where you can really, um, like bring a lot of like impact to project very heavily, um, you know, you, you can maybe do that at a smaller studio or, you know, maybe in like research and development or something at a bigger studio.
Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. And your question about like dealing with strengths and weaknesses, I think that's awesome. Um, because every team, every team is made up of, you know, um, just different individuals that, that have things they bring to the table. And I love my team. I love them. Like, um, everybody roots for each other and, you know, like we call each other's like awesome moments out and like sell it, like, you know, love it when we see like, so, you know, like when we see a design from one of like one of the other guys, you know, and like, oh, that's dope. I see what you did, man. You know, like we'll call it out and like, you mm -hmm. know, sort of enjoy it, you know, and truly and like meaningfully enjoy it, I think. And, um, and we help each other, you know, and if one of us is like, oh, I'm not sure how to solve this, like there's no like nobody like turns a nose up at being like, yeah, all right, let me see. Like, we'll think about trying this or think about trying that, you know. Um, so I don't know. I, I find it to be very. Uh, it, it's a really healthy, really good team with a bunch of really good people on it. I know that sounds kind of like stock answer, but like I, I mean it. It's, they're they're awesome. <laughs> well, diversity in skill set is awesome. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna right. have to. There's no way. Like when when you're building a party in an like RPG game, you don't want all mages. You don't want all right. warriors. Right. Right. You right. 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 Absolutely. That goes yeah. when you build teams when you're uh, building a company as well. I, that's what my opinion. Yeah, man. No, I think that's I think that's true. I think that's true. Um, and I don't know. Do you guys have any like I don't want to skip over any like art questions as you guys can see. I'm kind of like I bounce around and render different areas and kind of try to just like bring the piece kind of up along on, on different sort of axes as I go. But um, I don't know. He's turning out all right. You know, not too bad. Not too bad. It's like a little angry. Angry Poro guy. Looks awesome, like you, dude. You, like, like you Looks mad, great. But <laughs> <laughs> like you mad, man? Why is, this, why is he so mad? Nah, he's he's angry because he's because he's cool like that. Okay, I have a question for chat as well. If this is a card, and what's the keyword that it has to have? Hmm. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Make them work. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I I have another question for you. Chickpeas and rice. Uh, I think you. Well, I'm not reading it. <laughs> I fell for it. It was a compliment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ardilom, maybe you can add some saliva there to show that he is thirsty to eat you. All right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can do, guys. Yeah, we're not done. We're not done here. It's a good idea. All right, all right. Yet. See, he's getting zappy. Told you guys we'd, we'd make him zappy. Uh... Okay, I Something. think it's it's also uh, good to remind about the contest. Maybe we have new people in here. So after this art stream, uh, you're also invited to share your versions of this beautiful I can't say beautiful anymore. It's yeah, like they're things. They're they're beautiful. Yeah, pe like fearful or beautiful. I don't know. Cute. Disporo, your version goes on Twitter at player. Uh, don't forget to mention player Inter and use hashtag draw with ride. And please make sure to check the link and check the rule sets as well because I think it's also important and it's also valuable to. Uh, explore the rules. The first place will also get the unique opportunity to speak with Chris one on one. Yeah, you sorry guys. <laughs> no, not not sorry. <laughs> hmm. Well, you they will they will have the chance to meet you online and ask a bunch of questions much better than I do. Now you're doing great. Don't down yourself, man. You're awesome. Terror Poro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Like, sure. before before joining Riot or before joining the Legends of Runeterra team, uh, were you playing card games, or do you think is it is it important for a designer to play card games in order to design uh, cards? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I actually, I played a lot of Hearthstone mm -hmm. um, before I joined. Um, before I joined Lore. Um, and yeah, it definitely helps, you know? It's always good to understand, you know, how things are going to behave and interact in the environment that you're trying to create. Um, I don't know, it just, it, it does a number of things. Like, for one thing, it, it makes you, you know, it gives you ideas because you're like, oh, I've, you know, I've played games and I know, like, what this moment feels like and I've always thought, like, it would be cool to do, you know, um, something else you know what i mean like oh i wish i could create this kind of thing for for players or what have you and um i don't know it puts you on the same footing you know you gotta you gotta know you gotta have an idea as to like what would be fun to do and fun to experience in the game you know and if you don't play a game i think it's hard to kind of have that that empathy it doesn't mean you can't by any means but it just it gives you a leg up you know and, mm -hmm. and you can you can try to create from a place of understanding like what what would be cool to have happen so we are going to the end of the stream we have 30 more minutes if you want to have those 30 minutes yeah man we can finish that uh yeah i mean we could we could call this dude done when we when we hit 30 minutes that's nice that's all right I'm trying, trying to add in little little touches that dudes probably. I remember myself watching uh, Bob Ross at a time. I was like, okay, this is a wonderful piece. I bet he's finished. And then it's much like you. I said <laughs> this like in the 30 minutes timeline. I was like, oh, he finished. <laughs> and you, add, you keep adding stuff that makes this piece much more beautiful with every touch, like just like Bob Ross did. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Bob Ross is is the man. He's on another level. <laughs> True. Okay, guys, do you have any questions? Because we are going to end in 30 minutes, but still we have space for your questions. When creating a character, how do you determine if you have put enough details into it? Um, yeah, I mean, that's always one of those things that is, is a constant kind of back and forth. Um, some of it is just kind of understanding, like, you know, we have a certain level of detail that we kind of work in on lore. And if, you know, you guys remember earlier I was talking about like League of Legends, there's a different level of detail, you know, because of the the size of the character and the readability needs and the top-down view and all that stuff. So um, when it comes to, like, stuff for the game, it, it's a lot of it is about knowing that, like, you know, you've kind of hit a, a safe zone or a, or a place in the design where you... Um, uh, <clears throat> Where it feels like a part of the world, you know, where it feels like it, it reaches the same detail level as like the other stuff in the world. Um, and then personally, it, it's just kind of like, you know, it's always tricky. You just go until you feel like you've you've said what you want to say and you put enough details in it to like be visually interesting and fun for yourself. And, um, you know, part of it is kind of that like, just what are you, what are you experimenting with? What are you trying to do uh, with it, you know? So there's not like a real like set answer. I think I think it has to do kind of with like what are the parameters mm -hmm. you're like working in, you know? What do I? What do the results of this need to be? Um, he's good. They asked about your favorite character, but you already answered that. And maybe it's time. Or it's also time for you to, uh, for me to uh, remind that it will be a VOD. Uh, guys, don't worry. If you missed the start of the stream or if you can watch from now on, 
you will have the chance to view it offline. Can you talk about your Pike with Dreads concept? I didn't see it yet. Oh, um... Pike? Yeah, I actually... So, yeah, we worked on... on like, Pike did have some different haircuts. At one point, I, I he had longer hair. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the, the reasoning behind getting rid of it was, again, like one of those readability um, elements for... For in game, you know, for league, um, he has that that like shark or that that um, what is it like? Is it bonefish or jawfish or whatever? Uh, the jaw around his neck, and when you're designing for something like league, you have to kind of decide on the amount of details you're going to put in an area, and um, the the long hair just added too much like visual noise to an area that we already had a lot of focus on. Um, and especially like once you get to, down to the size that you see things in in League of Legends, so I, I think it just got it just got cut ultimately by by the needs of the game, you know, not so much a a choice outside of that, like a not not like a lore choice or anything like that, or a thematic choice, just one of those things. I feel like I feel like I'm getting to the end of the like the big like test, mm -hmm. you know. And you're like, okay, oh, okay, I gotta add this like sentence here, and it's like, okay, I gotta add a little bit of there. You know, like in high school, you had a big test, and you like pencils down in ten minutes. Uh, I think I got enough in there. Oh, for the for the contest, we have a question. We should draw a portal or any lol themed art. If, if it's for the contest, uh, you should draw this Poro, but with your own version. Not, not a different, different Poro, this Chunks. Chunk. Yeah. Chunk. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Chunk. No, you need man, to, yeah. yeah, you need to customize Chunk with your view. Yeah. Custom yeah. Chunk. Do you have any tips for new starters or new starting or thinking about people thinking or skilled about design starting new? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, again, like one of the main things, just draw. Like if you want to design and do characters, like just just draw, draw people, draw characters, draw. I know, like I, I think there's a lot of value in it, and you need to study like the way people work and anatomy and and posing and all that stuff. Like you have to do that. But I also like I love it when I see people's like like their own personal characters and stuff like that. You know, I don't think I think as long as you are paying attention to the kind of the fundamentals that you're ultimately going to need, because you're not always going to get to draw the like fun little character you want to draw. Some you know you, you have to be able to interpret other people's ideas and and other you know design needs and stuff like that. So um, so anyway, I guess I, I'm trying to say is like study your fundament fundamentals. That's that's probably like the main thing you need to do to begin with. But really, like, I love always kind of like just looking at things that you love and looking at designs that you love and, and working on like drawing characters that you just naturally like drawing. Like, don't don't lose sight of that. Pay attention to that when that happens, and because um, that that's kind of like your your voice developing. Uh, Renai Roll uh, asks, are you satisfied with your journey as an artist? What would you have done differently knowing that, knowing what you do now? Um, yeah, man, it's interesting. You know, I, I came back to art at a time when I was really ready to like appreciate just the act of making it. So there's something about like, you know, just kind of like the, the piece of mind i guess or whatever that i had when i was like yeah i just want to be doing art and like knowing that and that was very different when i was like drawing in high school and actually when i was drawing like as a kid you know you would draw like a dragon and it was just dope it was like yeah i love it it's my dragon um but then you know you get older and, and you go through like 
I don't know what we call high school, um, but you know, whatever kind of like secondary uh, level school or whatever. And everything's about like, you know, grades and competition and stuff. And I don't think that, I don't know. I don't know that I had the right sight on like what I would do with my art and what it meant to have my art. Just like for me, once I was like leaving high school, I don't know, maybe I would have. But um, anyway, so I, I miss that I, I, I've, there's so much time that I could have spent making art and learning and, and, and being creative visually that, that I, I, I sort of have, have not gotten. And, and at times I definitely feel like I'm always playing catch up to that. Um, there's so many talented people that I work with and, and it can be very inspiring and, and awesome. And it can also be intimidating at times. Um, but, but at the same time, like, I, I don't know, I, I brought, I now when I make art, I bring like the time I spent studying like English. I read like tons and tons of books. In my, my late teens and early twenties, I was just like devouring books and stories and breaking down characters and how they work and how do stories work and things like that. And I find that super, super valuable um, in the way that I develop characters today and how I think about characters and think about like how they could fit into a world. And, and it's, it's, I find it super useful when I'm, when I'm chatting with, uh, you know, with other, other disciplines, you know, like chatting with design or narrative or whatever, and talking about like my, my vision for a character and trying to sell them on an idea. Maybe that's a little weird or something. Um, <laughs> So there's trade-offs. There's trade-offs. I don't know. It, it's it, it has its ups and downs, you know. But I don't know. I know that I, I came back to it this time around, feeling like I don't know. Like I have something. I have more to say, and I spent time away, kind of studying other ways to say say things. And I, I think it just it it bleeds into my art in a way that is beneficial. Um. Pompa de Pon asks, can you ever be too late to enter the industry? I'm 28 and still studying. Um, I don't think so, man. I don't think so. It's all about like, it's it, well, that, that that it comes down to a couple of things. Like one is like, can, can you make art that, you know, uh, a studio can use? Um, and then, you know, are you good to work with? You know, like you say you're 28. Yeah, you may not be like fresh out of art school, 20 years old. Um, you, you may have less time to um, to sort of just devour art, uh, depending on like what your like. You know, I have kids. Like, I don't know if you have kids or whatever the case may be. Um, but you've also done more things in life because you're older, and you can you can bring those experiences to bear when you're when you're working. You know, like those things those things come out. You, you probably have just a wider ranging like kind of empathy uh, for different types of characters just because you know you're older you've you've just you've seen a few more things um and, and that's like not a hard and fast rule or anything but it, it's just it's not you don't need to give up man there's strength and weaknesses to everything um and I, I don't think that there's like a hard and fast rule like riots filled with people that it, it was a second career you know it was something like you know they they found their way to riot and making games um you know as, as something that where they they like me they were like i want to do something that i'm passionate about you know and so yeah dude i don't think it's too late man i think you know you might you might have to work differently and be more efficient in the way you learn and stuff if you want to do it sooner but i always find uh early ages to be advantages but i think starting some something late some skill any skill late has a plus because you you already have experience in some things and you can use those experiences as you use your uh literature or uh book reading skills in your career as well so i think it's never late it's just you have to spend your time differently if you start late yeah yeah i mean it's, it's definitely it has, it has its different challenges yeah i mean it's not you know if you are older like i mean I, I I think it's amazing like the guys that just grind out artwork all day every day but they were they were smart man they they went to art school and they were very you know there's a lot of very talented young artists that we work with and I see how much art they produce mm -hmm. and it's like oh I wish I had time to do that but you know I love my family I love my kids and my wife and stuff and I need to spend time with them so 
you know, I, I rely on, in some cases, just some different, different, I don't know, skills or what have you. Um, anyway, all right, this dude's getting pretty close. Uh. There's one question about the contest that I have to give more info. Can it be Voliporo? Asked Alice Roby. Uh But in the way we see it, or it should be yeah. exactly like the one Chris is drawing. No, exactly uh. what you mentioned. Like you should use Chris's Poro as a main reference, but you can play with details and styles to create your own version. Are there permanent art jobs at Riot, or there are only contracts? Oh no, yeah, there's a lot of. Um, I don't know. I don't know if anything's permanent. You know, man, like nothing's it's permanent. Not like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. There's, there's, um, yeah, for sure. There's full time. Like I, I've been a full time artist at Riot for seven years. Um. So yeah, no, there totally is lots of them actually. Yeah, I don't know if I like this. As Do you ever feel the need to control your, yourself so that you avoid getting carried away with rendering? Narutesca. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can don't consider myself to be good enough at rendering to where I've like <laughs> gotten carried away too far yet. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. There are times when you can kind of be like, all right, I've done maybe I've done too much. But um, why well, are we are we there, guys? Is it over? All right, so I've, I've condensed this down. I might. I was thinking about trying to throw some extra little zappies on there. Let's try that. Do we have time? Yeah, yeah we have think. like twenty minutes. Yeah, all right. I'll take. I'll take a couple minutes before we call it. Okay, you can end early if you want to. Ah, oh, that's cool. But the chat won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, not too many though. Not too many guys. Get too crazy. Maybe do one little one over here. Okay, now this arm needs one. I think I don't know. Maybe it's down here. All right. Oh, I wanted to add like a little rune in here, you guys. Dang. So I am not going to put a lot of thought into this rune. Sorry, everybody. Actually, there are many like um, carrier uh, focused questions. You can visit carrier.writegames.com, I believe, or you can Google carriers and write games and work with us. There's a page called Work With Us. You can, I think, view if you are not interested in art, but other uh, jobs. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, we post art stuff too when we have them. Um... So uh, yeah, I mean, Chris, can you can you please explain these cubes on the mustache? Uh, they're just like metal cubes, yeah, um, like Nordic like caps. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, because it's like it's it's kind of just a little dinky version. I don't know that I love it, but a little uh, dinky version of this. Uh, uh, let's grab that. Oops. I like these things, even though I think these are like ice. But it's something meant to like just kind of mirror, just a quick, quick little thing to mirror that. Anyway, they probably need some more love, you guys. But I don't know that I'll have time to. Dang it! Boop. All right. Yeah, and like it should be, I don't know, might be one of those little add-ons. 
it's a bit much, but now you guys gotta solve them. <laughs> <laughs> Will this art piece be posted on social media? Absolutely. Chunk is getting the final form. Yeah, he's... We're getting there. Yeah, these probably don't have enough cool glow to them, but... There are tons of like uh, beautiful comments and like appreciation sentences that I don't read, but oh. like I want to Thanks, yeah, yeah, let you know that like we have amazing support from the chat. Thank you, Thank guys. you guys. Yeah, I appreciate it. That's awesome. And I just want to give a context that like oh, we are right now just like we are we are creating this show uh, with four four countries. Like I think. Awesome. I'm from Turkey, you're from state, and Oli is uh, from England, and Edgar is from Spain. That's awesome, you guys. Thank you, guys. Right. These mustaches are too strong and can handle these cubes easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with exactly. You. <laughs> Oh, that's that's an answer to the question. These cubes confuse me too. They should ha they should be heavy and drop the mustaches down. And the answer yeah, you're is right. Like, yeah, you're uh, right. <laughs> you guys are right. That's it, man. That's concept, guys. It, it takes iteration to get it right. Well, oh. if you know, you guys should uh, by all means, man, solve them bad boys. I, however. I am going to play with lightning bolts. Because I don't have much time. That kind of thing does happen a lot, you guys. Honestly, you, we talked about um, Pike's hair, you know? And it's, it's, it's that kind of thing, too, where you try a thing and maybe it doesn't quite work out the way that you were... Um, you were hoping or like it's a cool detail but it's actually kind of hard to make it like work at the end um, so that stuff does happen a lot and I think in this case it's like his little mustache caps like might not be the most awesome thing but I mean they cool you know but they could they could probably be developed further Cabal asks, I want to improve at digital art, but I have always find myself stuck in improving in stuff like pro proportions and angles. And wanted to ask if you have any suggestions on how to fix that. Um, I mean, you know, probably a part of that is like, if you find yourself continuing to go back to solving some of those fundamental things, like um you probably just have more stuff there that you're kind of continuing to work on um you know you, you can always just be playing around you know and, and trying digital techniques out and, and all that stuff and maybe, maybe combining exercises as much as possible like if you're going to work on anatomy or shapes or something like maybe just try to do it digitally um but you know maybe not use it to try not to like cheat you know like i was saying you, you can kind of flip the canvas and figure stuff out but um so, I mean, yeah, it's like the fundamentals, like those skills are, are no matter what, dude, they're a part of it. And if you have them, it makes digital work for you rather than you like just kind of being tied to whatever digital tricks you might learn. So it's, it's just kind of important to keep slugging, man. Like, you'll get there. Or or man or, or, or lady. I didn't mean <laughs> general man. I don't know. Um... But yeah, like whoever it is, like you'll 
it, it won't last forever if you keep working and keep getting your your traditional skills up like they'll they'll keep getting better and then you'll you'll find yourself worrying less about them and you'll be able to get in there and, and kind of do some more of the the playing and digital that you really want to do um but like i said in the meantime just find time to break out some time to do some digital stuff we're just playing around don't be too precious just see what happens when you try different layers and brushes and techniques and stuff so and chris we have only nine minutes remaining right, what's right. our progress 99 oh, like this, this, yeah this guy could be done like i mean honestly we could we could give him over to to you guys on the stream who want to take a crack at him whenever so i'm just kind of going until i until the the pencil gets taken from me so to speak at this point That's my cat. Well, this is this is the first of throw right. Actually, it's 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 a first for us as well. Thank you for sharing this opportunity uh, to yeah, share this you, beautiful uh, art stream with us from people all around the world. Yeah, I appreciate you guys, man. It's awesome. And, and the best thing is before we finished before we are finished uh i'll give more details about the contest but this time differently this time i'll just explain explain differently let's say <laughs> will there be more okay. art streams yeah like this is a hard question because we we want to but we can't promise you because of the technical difficulties we are experiencing due to these times but my job is to uh spread the word as much as possible that you love the stream a lot and you want the second uh version of draw with right and <clears throat> i think i can i think we can chris yeah man i think you know there's a lot of, you know, I, it's a lot of fun. Like I, I've enjoyed it. Um, it's been really cool, like getting to, to mm -hmm. draw and talk to you guys. And there's a lot of like really amazing artists at Riot that I think would be really cool to, to get onto a stream like this and, and hear mm -hmm. them talk about like their journey and their experience and see their techniques, man. Like I, I'd love it. I'd watch, you know. I, I also saw a lot of programming and video editing comments that they want. Uh, to know more about those crafts as well and please i want to make sure that yeah I, i'll be spreading the word yeah man there's a lot of a lot of elements that go into like making up games a lot of things that could probably be really fun to like listen to how they're done Woo! it's late for you guys All right, we're getting there, everybody. I think I am just playing until I am told I have to stop. Okay, they people ping me two minutes remaining. All right, it has it is, passed man. really fast. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's I guess that's him then. That's our boy. You guys down? There. Uh, all right, chonk. There we have it. Yeah, there you go, everybody. <laughs> There's chunk, our beautiful boy. Yeah, man. <laughs> Looks awesome. Cool, cool. Yeah, all right. Well, definitely. We'll um. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll I'll talk to who those that that know and figure out where this is going to be posted and stuff. I'm sure you guys will have that organized, but yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you guys so much. All you guys for, for joining and, and checking this out, man. This is, this has been a lot of fun and it's always super, super fun to get out with the community and, and get a chance to, to share some stuff with you guys and hopefully be entertaining. Okay, thanks for joining us today, both Chris and the Weavers. And please don't forget to read the rules before applying, if you are willing to apply to the contest. And yes, 
if you are inspired, if you want to draw your version of this Poro, uh, don't hesitate. Please make sure that you share on Instagram using the mention Playroom Terra and hashtag draw with right. And actually, it's time for closing. I'm super happy that it went so well, and I'm sad that we are leaving, but see you next time. And don't forget to Thank go into guys. the website like <laughs> this and check the news section and the article for the details of the contest. Till next time. See ya. See you guys. <laughs>